All right, uh, knowing the time, um, I'm going to call the, the, uh, this, this meeting to order. Um, welcome to the Westwood Planning Board meeting. My name is Trevor Lobenstein. I'll be chairing this meeting. All meetings are recorded by Westwood Media Center. Is there anyone else in the audience who would like to record this meeting? If so, could you please identify yourself? Seeing none, um, as a reminder, please turn off your cell phone ringers. The agenda is available at the rear of the room. The meeting will follow the order in the agenda. The meeting will be civil and all people will be treated respectfully. The format of the meeting will be when an item is called, the applicant will come forward to the podium to present their application to the board. The board will proceed to staff comments. The board members will ask questions of the applicant and then the public will be given the opportunity to comment. <coughs> Excuse me. When it's time for the public comment period, the chair will call those wishing to speak to the podium. And once at the podium, please identify yourself by stating your name and address for the record. All comments and questions shall be directed through the chair. All people will be given the opportunity to speak, but in the interest of time and fairness, repetitive or off-topic comments may be cut short. First, are there any changes to the agenda? There are no changes. Okay. So we have item number one. This is 16 Dilapa Circle. This is an earth material movement special permit and EIDR. It's a public hearing to <coughs> proposal to import approximately 2,300 cubic yards of earth to regrade property, install utilities, and landscaping for construction of a single family residence. Is the applicant here? Yes. Uh, representing the applicant, Rob Truex of GLM Engineering Consultants. We're here for the lap of properties. So this is an application before you for filling on the existing site. This is the existing site located at the corner of the Lapa Circle and the Lapa Park Road, Della Park Road. And it's actually not the first lot in is a drainage lot on the corner there that the town took during the acceptance of the roadway. And this is one of the few remaining lots within the project. If you went out to the site and looked at it, uh, the site itself sits down about six feet in elevation from the existing road. So the idea is to bring the house into there, have a walkout basement as you look at the house going towards the drainage lot and then filling the front yard and partially the rear and putting the driveway on the high side as you see it laid out on the, on the site up there. Um, this has gone before the Conservation Commission for a, I guess it's a land disturbance permit. It is disturbing more than the half acre. It's, so it went in there, it's about 2,300 square feet of land disturbance. So we went before them for a permit. That hearing's been closed. The project's been approved. Um, some of the comments that are in your letter from the uh, review consultant or some of the things that were mimicked in, the, in their meeting as well as far as like putting in erosion controls on the existing catch basins. That was something they brought up at their meeting as well. And I believe that should be in their decision. I haven't seen their decision yet. It hasn't come out yet. At least it hasn't come to me. So if you look at the site, uh, the Lapa Circle slopes probably at about one or two percent towards Della Park Road. So when they are bringing the material, is that there is a chance that materials could get on the street and come down to those two existing catch basins at the roundings there. So it would be recommended to put silt sacks in those during construction and monitor those on a regular basis, keeping them clean. Uh, we do have a tracking entrance proposed, which is uh, crushed stone. The one we were shown was, I believe, I don't, know, I don't have the plan up, but it was somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 feet. I believe your consultant is recommending we put that out to 50, which we would be fine with that as well. That would take it into just past the setback line. The front line of the house is about 43 feet from the street, so it would take it in almost the whole driveway length, as you can see up on the right-hand side. Um, not sure if it's part of this board, but we are putting in some roof runoff drainage system for the roof runoff, and that was really part of the uh, earth removal permit. Uh, we have erosion controls on the downhill side. There is a filter mitt proposed. Um, right now, I believe they have some, uh, I want to say, straw wattle on the site, which is going to be removed, and we're going to put in the filter mitt, just a heavier barrier. I'm just not sure if you're familiar with those. Mm -hmm. um, and, th and that's pretty much it. They just want to bring the lot up to grade. The house is sitting pretty similar to what the house sits across the street as far as the top of foundation goes. It's probably about a foot and a half above the center line of the road, the top of foundation, so the, the house will grade into the neighborhood. Can you answer any questions? Try to anyway. Okay. Um, is there any commentary from town staff or Abby? 
that's beyond what's in our packet, I guess. Or I don't have any further comments at this time. Okay. Do you have any f relevant comments, Phil? Yeah, you? Oh, we have your memo, yeah. Okay. Um, I don't have any comments or questions. Does anyone else on the board have any queries? Well, I was just curious because I remember this subdivision is quite old and quite old. The houses all got built right away. And why didn't this lot get built he, on? He's earth? actually built. I, that's. I mean, if you know. Mr. DeLapper and his properties, he owns them for a long time. <laughs> I've had a couple other projects I've worked on that lots have been around in his subdivisions for 20 years. But I mean, he did just build a couple around the corner in the last two years. So he's, he's had a few lots left over, not just this one as well. And right now, the material he has excess material on one of the lots around the corner. He wants to bring it onto this site. So now he wants to get started on this one. I think there may be even one more lot remaining other than this one. But if you've been out there in the last few years, I think he's done two in the last three or four years out there. There's at least one. <coughs> There's at least yeah. one on Delapa. One Park right around the corner. He's just Road. finishing. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. So. Okay. No, no reason why he just has had land in his bank, I guess, for a long time. <laughs> so, so you're importing. Uh, so you think. Is there enough there to import it from right around the block? It seems that way. He thinks there might be enough there. The, the gentleman who was doing the site work thought there was a couple thousand yards of material to come over from the other lot. That was the estimates they gave me. I didn't see what was on the other lot. I do know what we need on this lot. We need about 2,300 yards. But he did seem to think there was a couple thousand yards that he could bring from around the corner. So it's one of the things we do is always say what route the trucks would take to get there. Yeah. That'll be easy, but in just in case uh, you need some more truckloads than is actually available. Uh, I think he'll need more than actually available. So, oh, so where would the trucks be coming from? I, I don't know. I, I really don't know the answer to that right now. I mean, we could give you, once we have that information before they come, we could give you the information saying who the trucks Usually, are. We, we put it in the decision. Right. And then I would, I would think this name, you keep the trucks off of Clapper Tree Street and keep them on Winter, uh, winter, winter. Street. Coming <coughs> off Winter. Yeah, yeah. I think our, our condition that we have, our sample condition we have lists both of those streets, which is kind of obvious because I didn't know which one or the other. Go, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> actually, we, we have one of them. Could we avoid both of them, actually? <laughs> that would be great. Um, so maybe we could just we could modify that condition to say uh, for Winter Street only. Via Delapa or Dela Park Road. And that be, assumes yeah. they're coming only from Norwood on Winter Street. If they okay. did come from Route 109, then they should just turn down Winter first, then rather than. If they came down 109, would they come up by the high school? Come across that way? No, I suggest you come from uh, Park Plain that way. All the way down? Okay. Yeah, we can come in off Winter. So I don't prefer, yeah, I think maybe if you just put okay. the preferred route, it should be Winter Street only. Okay. And if they have to approach from Route 109, they should just take uh, Pond Street and Clampard Street Street until they reach Winter Street. Okay. That makes sense. The material that's down the street around the corner? Yeah. The material plan you yeah. have to build? You know where this came from? It came directly off that site? I'm, I'm not 100% sure, but I thought it came out of like the foundation hole and all that from a year and a half or so ago. I think it's been piled there for a while. I don't think he's trucked it in and stockpiled it there if that's what you're getting at. Well, I'm just wondering what is the makeup of this? Of this I'd have to see it again. Yeah. We have conditions that Joe has his substandard material. Correct. Well, oh, I guess we could sir, we could go out and look at the material and send you a letter of what it is. We could do that as well, or even have if it's even questionable, we could have like a testing company look at it and take a sample of it.
motion to uh, approve. Sorry, yes. Um, are there, is there anyone here from the public who has a question or a comment? Please uh, approach and state your name and address if you don't mind. Yes, I'm uh, Kevin Leary. Uh, my wife and I have lived at 71 Della Park Road for 17 years um, and consistent with the point that uh, Mr. Alanoff uh, made, uh, the neighborhood is established. Uh, it has gone through a six year period of having uh, onerous burden of Thompson Avenue construction and a de facto, I'll emphasize the word de facto, quarry operation going on on Thompson uh, Avenue where material was extracted, stored, processed, redistributed, and this has gone on for six years. And if you look at a map, it doesn't show here, but Thompson Avenue is very close by. And now we're facing another large excavation project or large filling project and I'm not a construction professional, but my estimate is there'd be about 400 heavy truck operations to move this much material. And that would be a massive disruption on a street that has a number of young children, a number of people have lived there for a long time, some in retirement, some in pre-retirement who like a peaceful neighborhood. And it seems like this site is just unbuildable, period. And uh, it should be uh, not considered for approval. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I guess I just would have been a quick response. I'm, I'm not sure the scope of our purview of this particular type of application really can go to a, go to sort of address the issues with the Thompson Road de facto quarry you mentioned. Um, well, but it is very close. I mean, by, as the bird flies, it's no more than 60 feet from where the slot is. Mm -hmm. um, and okay. I understand it's separate process has been proved already mm -hmm. um, and uh, you know to the point about the quality of the fill as I remember from the hearing on that site there was some very old fill that was put in decades ago at that site and it was from an unknown source uh, theoretically polluted and the first operation had to be to remove uh, tens of thousands of yards of bad fill which we had to listen to every morning at 7 a.m. And that went on for weeks and weeks and weeks. And then there was blasting that went on. And the um, debris from that blasting was kept, was processed. We had to hear that rock processing. And, um, and then that was moved. And now we're talking about moving a lot more debris or material into a lot that frankly is a marginal lot. If you go there, you'll see how marginal it is. And there's a reason why it's the last one to be built, because it is so marginal. And I would really argue this is a case where the mod plot or the approval should not be given. Um, could I just ask one more question of the applicant in sort of a semi-response? So you're anticipating simply a, a import operation on the site for the grading of the site, not a vast sort of operation of blasting or digging or other things. If you look at the uh, elevations, the cellar floor on the left hand side is about a foot mm -hmm. above the existing ground, a foot and a half. Mm -hmm. So not really digging into the ground to put the right. cellar hole in. I mm -hmm. wouldn't anticipate any blasting for that. And the garage is on the high side. You don't actually dig down the garage floor is higher than the rest mm -hmm. of the house. So yep. there's very little excavation to get to the foundation. They'll put some frost walls in sure. on the walk outside, but the cellar floor itself is actually right at or above the existing ground that's there today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing non-conforming about this lot <coughs> as, a, as, far as, zoning. as far as zoning or anything else in that notion. Okay. Right. I, I'll just add that this was approved in 1987 as a subdivision, as a buildable lot. At that time, there was 19 lot, buildable lots and three drainage lots. So this is one of the last lots to be constructed. Can Go I just ahead. ask one more question? Sure, right? please. If you don't mind the is, microphone. Yeah, no. Thank you. Um, is it fair to estimate that uh, 2,300 yards would turn into roughly 460 truck operations? I'll look at the applicant as I think he's a more of an engineer than I am. Or maybe Phil, I don't know. <laughs> Depending on the, the truck size they use. 
Okay, so those these are then trailer um, dump trucks then that have in excess of 10 yards of capacity. Oh yeah, any truck that would come in, right. a 10 wheeler would carry about 17 or 18 yards. Okay, so it's a trailer would carry about 20. All right, so we're so we're then going to have hundreds of trailer uh, dump truck operations on a residential street for one lot. Temporarily. Okay, but but one lot will require this much work. That that seems out of proportion to what would be appropriate in my mind. What is uh, remind me? What is the limit that <coughs> the limit of import or export that trips this particular application? Right, there's no maximum limit, but right. the 200 is cubic the yards is threshold. a trigger for this okay. review. Okay. Are there any other public comments? Okay. Um, <laughs> any further discussion from our end or further questions? Okay. I think, Mr. Uh, Atkins, you were making a, a move to move. <coughs> uh, I will make a motion that we grant the special permit uh, with subject to the conditions of approval that we've discussed here. Um, and um, especially modifying the one uh, for the all of the traffic to the to come in from Winter Street and uh, the notes we set about uh, pond to winter. I think we offered one additional condition, which was the, the applicant could provide a letter attesting to the quality of the material that would be brought into the site. Absolutely. Yes. Yep. I'll second that motion. Okay. Excuse me to interrupt. If, could, I think it's an EIDR and special permit. Could you uh, just, I think you said special permit, if you could expand that to EIDR as well. So it's a motion to approve the earth material movement special permit and EIDR for 16 federal officer. Thanks. Okay. I have a motion and a second. Are there any other <laughs> questions or comments or discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay. I believe that's a unanimous approval. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks. Do I have a uh, motion to close the hearing? I move we close the hearings. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Five eyes. Okay. All right. I'll just have to start talking a lot louder. <laughs> I watched one of these on. Uh, I watched it on television and realized that I'm pretty quiet. So oh. try to turn up the volume. All right. So let this be your first opportunity. Um, so our second item on the agenda is a 40 Summer Street. It's a shared driveway special permit public hearing. Continued from May the 9th and May the 23rd. This is the proposal for a 500 foot long common driveway to serve sing three single family residences. And I see we have a representative for the applicant. Good evening. Uh, since we were here last uh, discussing this project, we went out and did some additional field work uh, at the request of the board. Um, we have added the topography for lot seven, so we could show uh, that would be on sheet three of four, actually. Um, so we could show how that was to be constructed uh, relative to the expanded driveway width and the shoulder areas. Uh, and we found that when we uh, got additional detail on lot seven, uh, that we had to do some additional work on the northerly side of the um, roadway uh, because there's one point right at the intersection of our common drive and the lot seven driveway where there's a four foot cut. So that required a bit more shoulder work and that means we're gonna have to take out two more trees. Uh, that's where that is? What's that? Where is that on the? Uh, it's not on that sheet. I think you'll find oh. it on sheet uh, three of four. Oh yes. Uh, that would be the A&R sheet, so it's not there. That's four. Ah, okay, there it is. is. That's the grading sheet. So you can see the 
Uh, the dashed lines, of course, are the existing topography of the lot. The solid lines are the proposed topography. And we learned at that intersection between the roadway and the driveway, uh, there would be a bit more work than we had anticipated. So that's why we're taking out um, a couple of extra trees. But the, that's the downside. But the benefit of it is that we were able to install more of the drainage along the northerly side of the driveway as a result of the removal of the trees. We had a space in there where we were trying to keep the trees before because they were right next to the roadway. Uh, and we weren't able to put that drainage ditch in at that location because of it. Now we will. And how, how big were those trees and what kind? Uh, they're about 12 inch trees. There are no really large trees along the roadway, the driveway. We also did some work at the cul-de-sac, the turnaround. Uh, we located the trees at the center of the turnaround. They turned out to be uh, relatively small uh, red cedar, but then again, red cedar don't grow very large. Uh, so we're proposing to keep them. We're going to remove the stones around that uh, circle. Uh, and the lower left-hand corner of that cul-de-sac, we're going to have to put one tree well in to keep that one alive because that's about uh, just about 15 inches below the driveway elevation. So if we filled around it, it would probably kill it. We'll just put a tree well in around it. The rest of it would adapt very easily to the, uh, to, to the circle construction. Uh, and also at the southerly side of the cul-de-sac, you'll notice that dark borderline area. That's where we're doing full depth construction to widen out the turnaround so that it would be the 55 foot diameter that the fire chief was looking for. So you're going to fill in the, the cul-de-sac? We're going to fill it in, yes. So, so for which tree, the one on the? The, the dark one on the lower left hand side, that's the one that we're going to put a little tree well around so we don't have to lose it. Um, we located the tree line to the rear of, uh, along the sideline of lot nine and to the rear, uh, and that's shown on the plan. There's considerably more natural tree uh, of vegetation in there than we had originally showed on the former plan. Uh, there's more woods than we thought was there. Um, we have no plans on removing any of it. Uh, we saw no benefit of leaving the original, uh, the suggested uh, buffer zone, so we're not going to use that because we have no plans of removing the trees. So there won't be any buffer zone there. But the trees will remain. Well, how is there any guarantee of that? There is no guarantee, but then again, those trees are owned by the lot owner and they can do what they choose with them. If they want to thin them, they can, but there's no reason to, there's a massive uh, field behind that house. There's really no reason to take out any more trees. We also added another fence, or a gate, I should say, uh, just off the back side of the cul-de-sac. Um, like the former gate that was installed over on the westerly property line, this gate will also be fastened with a, with a, a strap, uh, secured with a strap, I should say, uh, and that will prohibit the passage of anyone, basically, between the two gates, which means you, if you're going to travel west of the cul-de-sac, uh, emergency vehicles can go through there, uh, but they're going to have to go through the first gate at the back edge of the cul-de-sac and then the second gate at the property line. Um, we removed the uh, proposed um, speed bump that we had out there because there's so much stop and going with these gates that there's not going to be anybody speeding. It seemed useless to be putting that in there even. Uh, the gate is far more effective than a speed bump. There's also a no trespass sign at the midpoint of that driveway should somebody go through, manage to break through or whatever the first gate and they're not emergency responders, they have no business being there. That's why the no trespass sign. And where would that be on there? Um, I don't have a pointer here. I'll show. Oh. Should Here's I vote? There's a no trespass sign. Um, other than some additional notes, we were cleaning up some miscellaneous items where more detail was added for the notes, such as house numbers along the common driveway, uh, individual water meters, and, and the like, that sort of thing. That's uh, what we have done with the plans since we, were l we last met. Okay. 
Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Um, are there any uh, staff comments at this point in time? I know we've been over this project several times already, so. Um, no, I don't have any additional comments. I did, except for I did hear from the fire department today that these plans um, are sufficient for the fire department. Okay. Um, with a request that the homeowners would maintain the private drive, the pavement and the shoulders. Okay. And how does that, how does such a thing get enforced, I guess, I would ask? I believe it would have to be as part of the easement or in the easement document and then should be, a, if it will be a homeowner's association to do that. Condition. Okay. Yeah, that's where I, that's what I assumed your answer would be, so. <laughs> okay. Um, any comments from you, Mr. Perdy, or you? No, okay. I think they've addressed all the engineering issues. Okay. Um, okay, I guess I'll ask the board if there are questions or comments on this application in its current form. Yeah, I was just wondering, what is the distance from the driveway to Summer Street on that? Is there a, I didn't see the marker on the, on the map. Um, from the driveway, you mean to the back edge of the cul-de-sac? So the, the entrance driveway, what is the distance from that point to, um, up to, I'm sorry, up to Westfield Street? Oh, I don't have, I don't know that distance. I don't have that. Okay. I'm sorry. So, uh, so what is there at the cul-de-sac itself as far as a sign that tells people not to use Oh, uh, it's not going to be a sign. We, we have a proposed gate now. Okay. Okay. Um, what about a sign on the gate that says this gate must be kept closed and locked at all times? Uh, there's a note on the plan to that effect. We wouldn't mind. We have no objection to putting a sign to that effect. According to the fire department, it can't be locked. Well, yeah, no, no, it can be fastened. Fastened is the term they'd like to use. Yeah, fastened is okay. <laughs> Right, the fire department had recommended the plastic um, strap that was shown on the plan. That way it could be um, easily removed if the fire department needed to get in there, but so still hold it closed. A condition and For the sign, the sign on the gate. Yep. On, actually, on both gates. On both gates, okay. That's on fine. It says the uh, gate must be kept closed and fastened at all times. The owner's responsibility, yes. And the oak tree. Yeah, so we found the oak tree, Steve. It was not in the center. You're not, the mess, you're, not you're not quite crazy. It was not in the center. Um, in fact, we're showing it just to the north of the cul-de-sac. It's a 36-inch tree. It's right here. And so, so that's a, a good height. It's not going to be disturbed at all. Not a bit. No, we're not doing any construction there at all. And there's some on the other side. There were some large trees, and those will not be disturbed either. You, no. you, you're increasing. The cul-de-sac a little bit, but there's no way in the that, that shouldn't affect any. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> any further commentary, questions? So, what um, what <coughs> would they what would the owner use the easement for? It sounds like it has been we've done a lot to make it hard to use, but um, granted that uh, it's only for that lot eight. Right. So it wouldn't be possible to use that easement to bring in construction materials for the other lots? It wouldn't or? be necessary. We're going to, we have a paved common drive right now, or driveway, I should say, uh, which we're going to widen. So we're, um, there's no reason to be going out back. We have a better access with our common drive than we have out back. We wouldn't go through there with, with any trucks. I just feel our concerns have not been met or mm -hmm. anything come to fruition with any kind of negotiation. Mm -hmm. We were clear and concise with our concerns about the overuse of the right of way. Mm -hmm. Now we're adding two more properties to it. You don't have permission mm -hmm. to use that. There's permission and then there's actual practice. And there's going to be three lots there anyway, so. Who's going to police it? I'm sorry, do you mind uh, identifying yourself real fast? It's okay. No problem. My name is Paul Sullivan. I'm the applicant. 
I mean, there's going to be an A and R plan in the three lots, which will have no restrictions on it. Yeah. If this doesn't get approved, so oh, I, understand I, I, I don't understand why anybody benefits from no restrictions versus having significant restrictions. That's special. Well, I find that it's, uh, it's negatively impacted the neighborhood. Now we're going from one house using a right of way constantly to now three houses <coughs> potentially using the same right of way. They're going to use them anyway. There's going to be three homes there. So there's either restrictions placed by the special permit and the planning board, but there's no restrictions. We're going to file an A and R plan. I understand. There's three that driveways. Works, your, your engineer has already said we can make the three end driveways work. He recommended that you approve this plan. And my engineer says we, he's already designed the three driveways. We know we can make them work, and we're going to file them. There's going to be three houses there. Okay. So I, I think it makes more sense for the board, for the neighbors, for everybody. You have restrictions. This is really about the point of access. It's about one point of access to three. It isn't about whether it's going to be three lots. There's going to be three lots. It's, it, there's going to be three lots there. We, we can file an A&R plan next week. It's, it's going to be filed. The owner is going to have three houses, three lots there. It's, it's their right to have three lots. Absolutely. They have frontage and square footage. It's, it's, a, it's a very simple legal process. They're, they've made it clear they prefer to have a shared driveway. They're trying to work with the neighbors and the planning board. They're not going to agree to everything. Nobody ever does. Everybody, it's a give and take. But um, I think they've come a long way. We've uh, put a lot of restrictions on the plan to uh, try to address concerns. And I, there's no incentive for the Mahanas they're private people. They let those neighbors drive through their property to go out that easement. There's absolutely no reason for them to do that. They, they wouldn't allow it. it. Why would they allow people to constantly drive over the property? It's much easier, and if you've been up there, it's much easier to go out Summer Street. It's the clear path to, one, to 109, to 128, or to go up to Needham Center. I mean, there's no real incentive for, they're not going to have any rights to that easement and a lot seven and a lot nine. And the plan approved is, that was originally approved, the, the, the lots are very similar to what was approved. Those, where, were it's, where was the concerns then about using? It wasn't on the board then, sir. Right. So I, I, I don't know, it's, we'd prefer, you know, obviously to, we put a lot of time and effort and money into trying to get this approved. But if, if it doesn't get approved, you know, we're fine with filing the A&R plan. That, because it's, it's a simpler process for us, and uh, it's clear we can do it. So, but it just seems it benefits the neighbors, the community, to have one point of access out to Sumner Street rather than three. It, you know, it, I, I, that's what we thought everybody would prefer, but if not, then, you know, we understand. So we'll, we'll just do separate driveways. Thank you. Thank you. I guess the, uh, the thing that keeps bothering me is just, it seems like the obvious solution is to just get rid of the paved easement. Like, we're saying single point of access to Summer Street. Um, why is it so critical to keep that road open and to put a, a no press trespassing sign in the middle of the backyard, gates on both sides? It's a lot of effort to preserve that easement. And, you know, it's their, it's their property rights. but. I, that's the part that I don't understand. Why not just get rid of the of that pathway? And um, it seemed like that's what people were most concerned about. Where's the road? So that makes me think there must be some something I'm not understanding. When they bought that property, it was there. I don't think they've overburdened that easement. It's been there for years. It's been there since 
the neighbors want. You know, they, but they try to address the concerns of the neighbors and the board. And I think they've come a long, we have come a long way. We've made a lot of changes to the plan, but your engineer recommended you approve the plan. He, he, he clearly stated that he knows we can do three A and R plans, A and R lots with, with uh, drive, separate driveways. And, but he thinks it's a better plan to have a shared driveway. And, and we agree. Um, so, uh, I understand that the the issue is that the uh, the abutters do not want the new um, the residents of the new homes to use that easement. So what what I uh, uh, what I recommend that the applicant look at is possibly realigning this road so that it went only to this house. So you would have a you know this. The person here would have an option to go this way or this way, and and cut off that, so that that would, you know, obviously if this person wanted to go out there, would have to go up their driveway and come down, and go out. So I don't know if that's uh, <coughs> again. Is, wouldn't that be kind of steep grades for them to do that? That's not right there. Really, the issue is a stone retaining wall there. Is a is a valley. It's. If it was a simple flat area, then you know I, I think they'd probably accept doing it. But it's not a s simple process to. I'm sorry. It's not a simple process to move the driveway over there. Uh, so we, we looked at it, and you know they, they have a retaining wall there. They have a pretty steep slope there. It's it's not something that's easily done. I think if it was a flat plane to go over there, I, I think they would have agreed to it. But. Um, but again, um, this is their private property. Why would they let neighbors drive over their property all the time? What would be the purpose? I mean, they're private people. They don't want people driving over their property. They're not going to permit these people to drive on their property. It's like, you know, if you have a neighbor, you're not going to want them to come over and drive through your, into your driveway or onto <coughs> your property. Thank you for your commentary. Appreciate it's much appreciated. Um, I want to give the folks in the audience a chance to speak, but I would just ask maybe ask, ask of the board, uh, first of all, if there are any further questions or comments. But secondly, if there are, if we've all had a chance to read the two draft motions that have been prepared by town planner, and particularly the motion for approval and the finding section in particular. Um, And if we haven't had a chance to do that, packet. may we t take 30 it seconds to all do that. The packet. <coughs> last night, emailed last, so um, the draft motions were emailed to you last night and uploaded into the meeting packet. I had made some additional revisions today <coughs> in your But you, the findings, you didn't give us the findings last night. Uh, yep, it was all. Oh, okay. yep. Maybe I all right, so you added a little bit to, to condition number two. Yes. Had some right, so I just. You don't have to do it now, but I want to just go over condition number two because I think it's the key here mm -hmm. and make it even more ironclad. <laughs> we can do that later. We can do that. Yeah, we can do that later. Okay. Are there any other any other questions or comments from the board? No. Okay. Um, I know we have a couple of folks in the audience. Um, I think they're they're butters, um, and I invite you to come up with your comments um, and maybe just keep in mind f for the sake of the the group that. We've heard a lot from everyone, and maybe if we could try to keep to new topics or responses to the amendments and to some of the discussion here tonight. So that would be great. If you don't want to speak, that's fine too. <laughs> but you're here, so I figure you do. <coughs> thank, thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak. My name is Joe Toffoloni, and I live at 65 Ridge Road with my wife and three daughters, and we're in, we're in a butter within 300 feet of the of the proposed property. <coughs> One of the things that I'd like to address is they've brought up the point that they would like to have a single point of access to the three lots that they're looking to put in there. Well, the, it, it appears to me, based on, on, the, on the, um, the town's zoning, the, on the town's um, subdivision rules and regulations that they are not 
th they are not able to put a road into this property to service those three lots because they don't have the distance from Westfield Street. According to the, according to um, section 4.0, the design standards, um, section 4.4 street location and alignment, they would need 600 feet from the radius point on Westfield Street to the new road that they're putting in. The, right now, they, they only have 404 feet of tangent frontage on that road. So they wouldn't be able to put a road, a road in to give a single point of access to this. So it appears to me that this shared driveway, if it's utilized to provide a single point of access, is, is if in effect, it's circumventing the subdivision control laws because by subdivision control laws, they'd be unable to do this. So the only way that they're gonna be able to do it is by putting in this shared driveway. And in the zoning regulations, um, in section 6.0, the, ge the general regulations, paragraph 6.128, it states that the, use th that the use of a shared driveway does not circumvent the intent of the subdivision control laws. So it appears that this, this, is in th this whole proposal is, has an issue just as far as the, the town's laws are concerned. And I'm also not sure, you know, based on the purpose and authority in the, of the zoning bylaws that, you know, one of the things it says is to encourage the most appropriate use of land throughout the town and to preserve the cultural and historical heritage of the community. Now, this shared driveway, what it's helping to do is it's gonna take away an area now that is that is not developed. I mean, it's going to increase the density in there. It's going to take away areas where the wildlife is. There's, there's an old hunting lodge. So it, it seems that, that this, is, this is counterintuitive. Now, the other thing which, which I find interesting is that things that they've had on the plans before, which might be, might be beneficial, they're now deciding that they don't want to do it. I mean, they at one point in time, they had speed bumps, which happened to be in the original recommendation. Um, and just for the record, the plan that's shown here looks nothing like the plan that originally was submitted to the town. Both houses on that original submission, both lots were on the Summer Street side of that circle. It, 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 if you overlay the two plans, I know they keep on saying this, there's, there's nothing in common with the two plans. And obviously they had 11 years and didn't do anything with that, but, but this is a completely different plan. Now they're saying it's odd, you know, we'll do whatever we want to do as far as the trees are concerned. We don't need to put a speed bump in because nobody's going to go that fast. The House 136 and, and 126, I mean, they, they have that driveway going right between there. I can even see people from a house take off through, through that area. And I also see the gate left open. And I see that from my own house. So, you know, I, I think that there are, that there are issues. And I, I really think the biggest thing is, is, is whether this is circumventing something that the town is, is, not, is not, not, will not allow to do by subdivision control laws. So, and I, let's see. I think that's. I think that's basically it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <clears throat> um, just a couple of comments. Michael Gillis, 136 Westfield Street. One of the comments was that they attempted to work with the residents. I've never had a call from any of them. They haven't worked with us with anything. I've offered at the first meeting. I met them outside. Told them what would be agreed to. And you've seen how the ball keeps switching. First, Mr. Mohan was here last year, last meeting. No, I don't use it. No, I don't speak English. Yes, I speak perfectly good English, and I'm going to use it, and I don't care what you say. The reason that they want the easement so bad is because they plan to use it. 
They were here 11 years ago. They're going to put in two fences then. They put in one. They're going to keep the fence closed. It's been open every single month, no matter how many times we close it, except for when you guys were going up to look at the property. It's been closed since then. They never put in the, the speed uh, bump. Uh, this was originally three houses on the street. He was going to make a little family compound for his kids. It's absolutely not true. It's a commercial venture to put excess houses that benefit him and not the town. Um, one of the questions that keeps coming up, which I think hits the nail on the head, is enforcement. Um, how do you enforce this? If he sells the houses and somebody cuts the ties, and the one, the gate up at the circle, we can't even see from our house, what's to stop it? Uh, the reason that, and then I think maybe one of the uh, questions, I think the reason behind one of the questions of the distance of that third house to the street is, is it easier to go down Westfield Street? It is. It's equidistant, if not less, and in addition to that, the contour of the current driveway that is on Summer Street is so curvy and hilly that if you have trailers, which most of the landscape trucks and so forth and FedEx and everybody have, it's a straight shot. You can see how much easier that you don't have all the, first of all, you don't have to turn that whole vehicle around and go back down. And um, it, it's just a straight out in Westfield. And as we said before, how do you stop it? Um, there are no trespass signs, things like that, again, totally unenforceable. They've had trespass signs there. Um, the Homeowners Association, how do, how do we get them to enforce this? The, it, it's a totally unenforceable. Not only is it totally unenforceable, but they've reduced the number of things that they want to do, like speed bumps, in order to keep it safe. I don't know how any of that goes to um, making it more safe. But the real question is, you know, how does this help the public interest. I mean, the bylaws talk about that, that a development has to help the, particularly, uh, you know, the purpose, Section 1.0, uh, uh, promote the general welfare of the town to protect the health and safety of the inhabitants, to encourage the most appropriate use of the land throughout the town, <coughs> to preserve cultural and historic heritage of the community, and to protect natural environment. I haven't heard one word in all three meetings how this plan does that. The only thing this plan does is it, you know, it's a commercial venture for the owner you know, of the property. Uh, but more importantly, um, last time we were here, there was a lot of talk about circumventing the, the subdivision laws. I've spoken with three lawyers who specialize in this area. Uh, they've all read this. They don't understand how you get around it. My understanding was we were going to have an opinion at this point by town council so that we could look at to see what his position is. I don't see why, if it's approved, you'd have uh, you know, three abutters having to go out and spend twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 in legal fees to fight this when we don't even know if it's legal. Uh, and I'd like to see an opinion from town council on this issue uh, because the three lawyers I've talked to uh, slam dunk that this is, uh, it's, you need 600 feet. You don't have it. Uh, clearly, that's a road major. Uh, and one of the big issues at the last meeting was this issue, which the applicants were supposed to address, and they didn't give you one word, one word, that they've addressed this issue or that this is even legal. To the contrary, we've gone out and talked to specialists in this area, and it clearly is illegal. And I'm sure town council will come to the same conclusion. So I don't understand why, when we have something that violates the uh, purpose of the bylaws that we would propose something that's not even legal uh, because it is in uh, you know, circumvention of the uh, of those laws um. <coughs> uh. The, the statement that he doesn't want people driving up and down his driveway is, is patently false. I mean, that's why it's a sheer driveway. He wants to have three people driving up and down his driveway. Uh, and those three people all have access, as he does, to that same easement, even though legally they're not entitled to it. And I think Ms. McCusker said it, you know, how do you enforce it? Um, uh, the new plan here uh, doesn't have all the topography. There's no topography for the existing house. I'm not sure. I'm not an engineer. Uh, what, what, what that helps or doesn't help. Um, I'm not sure why uh, one of you raised the point we take away the buffer zone when all that's going to do is give the person who buys that back lot to move the house as far back as they want and cut as many trees as they want when they do that. Uh, the reason for the buffer zone is to uh, work with the abutters. Taking out the buffer zone just shows, once again, they don't want to work with the abutters. They want to work against it and put in things that are unenforceable so they can do whatever they want when they get up there. In fact, if you look at the plan, the last line on... Um, um, 
again, I'm not a, um, an engineer, but I'm not sure why it says on the uh, third uh, notes on the plan, it says, this plan cannot be used to create these lots, which means once they get approval from you, you get, they can go in and do whatever they want. This is not set in stone. In addition to which, what you raised in the first meeting and the second meeting and raised it again in the third meeting is we still don't have a proper uh, application because the uh, name of the applicant and the signatures are two different parties, which has never been fixed. And lastly, uh, which the issue that has never been raised by the applicants is the safety issue. How does this plan make it more safe for the existing people? It doesn't. Uh, you've been there. You've seen the street. You've seen the slope. We've seen the cars that come down there daily. We still have young p uh, kids in the house. One of the youngest is 11 who's out in the driveway at a constant basis. You've all surveyed the property. Nothing that this project does, besides being illegal, does anything to promote the safety of the neighborhood. Lastly, I'm not sure if we have access to it, but whatever was sent around today, if there's an opinion, I would certainly like to have an opportunity to review it so we can comment on it before any final decisions are made on this. Thank you. As well as any, any uh, opinion of town council. Thank you. <laughs> it was stated a number of times that it is illegal. That's patently incorrect. This is not a subdivision. Doesn't have to comply with the subdivision rules and regulations. The spacing of street streets. This is a common drive. Why is it beneficial to the community? Because it's a single drive for three homes rather than three separate driveways intersecting the public way. It's all very simple. Why did I, rem I remove the mound, the speed bump, from the, from the emergency access? Because I put an extra gate in. You can't get there from here. What's the point of a speed bump to a place that you can't get to? The only vehicles passing between the end of that cul-de-sac and the property line are going to be emergency vehicles. Lot 8 has a right to go through there. Why would they? They got to take, they got to unfasten two gates to get there, in and out of your car twice. It just, it's pointless. So, you know, this, the owner doesn't want to give up his right. That's what he wants to do. That's his choice. Um, he's not going to extinguish the, the, the easement, regardless of how much Mr. Gillis wants it extinguished. It's not happening. So we work with what we've got. This is, a, this is an emergency egress. It can't be used for anything else. There's too many gates in the way for anybody to use it. Who's going who's gonna to police it? The town's not going to police it. They can't do that. The Mahanas are going to police it because they don't want the neighbors going through there. They can't go through. Why the hell would they want the neighbors going through? It's simple. I've been doing this work for 40 years. I've never seen an attorney say something like this is illegal. That's nonsense. Thank you. <clears throat> Something new? Yes. New. Two things. Um, <coughs> one, um, they had mentioned that there'd be three houses going up there regardless, uh, and the approval is not uh, required. That would be three separate driveways, and that would take care of the overburdenment of the easement, uh, because we wouldn't have three people having access to the driveway going through. Um, I haven't heard anything on the other side that other than that, it's nonsense, but there hasn't been any factual basis presented in all three meetings how this would comply with uh, uh, not getting around the, um, the uh, subdivision. So just saying it's, it's nonsense. How about some facts? Right. So a quick question. Has, have we, has, a, has town council had an opportunity or has been offered the opportunity to look right. at this at all? You do not have an opinion from town council, but through my review and my discussions, this um, this is a special permit. There's a special section in your zoning bylaw that allows um, special permit, and it refers to um, not being able to circumvent the subdivision control law. The definition of a subdivision in the state law and your rules and reg, um, a subdivision is um, when you're creating new frontage 
um, for new buildable lots. In this case, the applicant submitted an A&R plan as a proof plan to you um, for this meeting showing that the lots can be created with the minimum 125 feet of frontage on an existing road, Summer Street. So Summer Street is that physical access and Town Council has um, informed us that um, if there's frontage physical frontage that meets the minimum zoning requirements, those lots can be created. So it, it is different. It's a special it's permit application, mm -hmm. not a subdivision application. That makes sense. C can I add, because this, this has come up over the years <clears throat> before, and people said, people say, how come you, you know, you couldn't put a subdivision roadway that close to the intersection? But this is not a subdivision roadway, it's a driveway. And the subdivision rules and regulations govern <clears throat> subdivision roads, uh, not driveways. And this is not a subdivision because, again, it has frontage on, uh, on, on Summer Street. Now, that provision in there means if instead of, put, of cre having to create a, uh, a subdivision road, they, they wanted a shared driveway, and, and they didn't have that uh, frontage. Uh, I mean, that would be trying to to uh, to uh, get bypass the the subdivision rules and regs. But in this case, it isn't. This is not a subdivision. Never was a subdivision. It is uh, simply an A and R, which is not a subdivision. And, uh, and so that distance does not apply at all. It's, it's this is simply a driveway, and anyone can put a driveway as close to an intersection as they want, we may not be the best thing to do, but, but they can. And, and at least in this case, you have to note the driveway is as far from the intersection as it, as it could possibly be. And it's an existing driveway that's in there. <coughs> and to, uh, the other way to go with three driveways would put two new driveways closer to that intersection. So that would be violating the intent of the subdivision uh, rules and regs. Just to um, quote the shared driveway statute here at the town, um, section 6.1.28, it says in it that a shared driveway uh, can be proposed as the sole means of access for parking. Um, this isn't the sole means of access. The sole means of access, it would be a sole means of access if they didn't have an easement out the other way. So it does have, it's more than one means of access, and I don't think it even fits that definition, but we're not saying what they're proposing is in a shared driveway. What we're saying is that they're trying to circumvent the rules and regulations of a subdivision, which they don't have, by calling it a shared driveway. <clears throat> well, I have a couple of, just a couple of comments. Um, one, I, you know, the issues, is, appear to remain the same. Um, the issue of the easement and the access there through, um, in my mind, is not going to substantially change with the, prop with the proposed version of the plan or the a &R plan of which we've, I think we've had a chance to review. Um, <clears throat> on the topic of the detrimental effect to the neighborhood, to the community, in my mind, two additional driveways onto Summer Street would have a far more deleterious uh, effect on this property as a natural area of the town and would pose a much greater safety issue on Summer Street than the current condition. Um, the current condition, the new condition, I find to be, you know, virtually the same, if not improved by the widening of the, of the shared drive and by the improved drainage, which will have a, certainly have a better environmental effect than, uh, than what is there today. So I'd encourage my other board members to speak, uh, speak up on uh, any of the comments at this time. Yeah, I, I <coughs> want to add to that. Summer mm. Street is a scenic road. Just wanted to make sure. I think it is. And there's been a lot of effort by the town to create, to keep, to maintain the character of Summer Street. We've recently had a, uh, another uh, a and R where there are new lots created and they wanted to put breaks in the stone wall, which really wasn't even visible from Summer Street. We went through that to make that as, as suitable uh, as we could. Further up the street, the Westwood Land Trust has done quite a bit, in fact, a huge amount on preserving property along Summer Street. Uh, on the other side of the road, uh, they have, again, properties with which, which have conservation easements, uh, and they uh, 
are currently working on acquiring even more land along Summer Street and creating more conservation easements there to protect the, that scenic nature of uh, Summer Street. So for them to <coughs> have three driveways, and it's not, it's not the three driveways, to get those driveways, those, they'd have to put in serpentine driveways, cut down all the trees, they'd be totally visible from the street. Uh, it would really disrupt the whole character of Summer Street if, if, if they had to put in driveways down those slopes where, the, where it's just like a, a treed area now. Uh, they'd have to strip out the trees and regrade everything to get those driveways in. Uh, that certainly would dis destroy the, the character of Summer Street, which the various groups in the town have worked you know, for so many years to, to maintain that. So I think that that's the, the benefit to the town uh, is that one driveway instead of those three driveways, particularly given the nature of what those driveways would look like. I had a quick question. Maybe I've, I just lost <coughs> lost track of the, my grasp of the rules and regs. The buffer zone that was taken out of the plan. What did that? What service did that perform to the in terms of restriction on the buildability of that lot or on the amount of work we can do to that lot? Was that actually was that literally a, a restriction on how many trees can be removed by whoever the owner, the future owner is, or is right, it simply? Right, we were a, using a self-imposed twenty-foot buffer strip right. for the trees. That's all. Yep. It turns out that the trees are so much deeper than that, we were never even going to get anywhere near that 20-foot buffer mm -hmm. with what's already there. So there was no usefulness of it. And about how far, we're talking about lot nine predominantly, I assume, right? right? Yeah. So I guess I could scale it myself, but um, the distance from the south, plan south corner of the proposed house box to that Edge of woods is approximately how far? Probably 100 feet. Probably 100 feet. Okay. Oh, the, the, I'm sorry. The building envelope? To the no, building to the tree line. line. About 100 feet. Okay. Okay. Thank you. There's really no reason to cut those trees. They provide privacy to the future homeowners. For the future homeowner, not just existing homeowners, yeah. Because they're already owned in the field and it's plenty of space. Right. Okay. I mean, I would love to see well defined. No cut zones everywhere, but but it <laughs> even I mean we have a tough time even doing it with Sidewalks. subdivisions, and this is not a subdivision, mm -hmm. uh, so it would be voluntary or something voluntary on your part. Uh, well, as a special permit, you can impose conditions. I mean that the applicant would have to agree to if if approved. You could. Um, you could impose a condition that they're, they they um, not remove the trees in, within a certain distance from that boundary line from the abutting um, Ridge Road and Far Reach Road properties. Well, I mean, I, do, I mean, do you think that would is that suit appropriate in this case? I I think so. I mean, we'd the applicant should agree to it if you well, approve it as a condition, yeah, it, but you. Yeah, you well, could if, impose grab, that if the applicant agrees to any condition, yeah. then then we can impose that condition. If he doesn't, then well, the question is, would you agree to putting in some buffer zones, bringing them back and putting them in appropriately? Yeah, in the back there, we didn't know where the tree line was when we first proposed the 20 foot, but uh, I, I don't see any problem with the 20 or 25 foot. So where was the actual line on the? I think it's going to bring you to the envelope, so we're not, nobody can build beyond that. They would anyway. Take the envelope and put it in. It would be past the what, I'm sorry. It's such a depth of trees there, anyways. We're not going to go just back to the. Even if they wanted to put a barn in, they just didn't go there. It's too far away. Right. There's plenty of open field to build whatever they need to build there. Right, the um, previous plan from your last meeting showed 20 foot, um, and that was right around the building envelope line. Really? 20 feet? I'm sorry, I'm, I'm confused. 20 feet from the property line or 20 feet from the house? 20 the feet from the property line. Oh, got it. Okay. Yeah. Well, if you agree to a 30 foot, we, why don't we just put it back? Yeah. In? I don't well, think it's. I don't see a problem. 
yeah, it, yeah, it, I, I would, I would support it may that still as not well. Do any good, but at least we have it. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Because thirty, based on how I'm skimming the drawing, would almost get you to the tree line, and maybe you lose a couple on the edge if someone really wanted to. But I think that would be fair. <clears throat> Any other board comments? Yeah, I just had a, uh, we, th the concept of enforcement has come up a number of times on the gate. And I just, so what happens if the, if the gate is the, so for the owner to leave, he has to get out of his car, clip the first gate, open it up, drive the car through, go back, tie it, drive to the next gate, clip it, drive through, close the gate, and then tie it, and then keep going. What happens if the owner doesn't retie it? What is the enforcement there is no that we're requiring? Nothing. Well, we would, the town could enforce it. We'd have to be contacted. We're not going to drive up there on a regular basis. But if we were notified, either the building department or um, myself, the planning office, to enforce the conditions of your approval if approved. But what would the, what would the, method of enforcement be like I know we have things like the uh, emergency access off of um, on Fox Hill Road you know that mm -hmm. has a chain across it like a couple of days after mm -hmm. town meeting um, and what what is the real enforcement that we can do in a situation right we would notify them we talked a little bit about this at town meeting with one of the other um, zoning amendments that you made by increasing the fines for zoning violations. So usually first the policy is that a letter of notification be sent to the owner about the violation and then um, <laughs> fines imposed after that. And, and every day could be a monetary fine for each day of violation. But again, we wouldn't drive around there on a regular basis, so we need to know about it. If the neighbors, did if the neighbors the notified us right. and we would verify that and then it wouldn't take long to send a violation a fine. fine. 300, it could be up to $300 a day. Something further? Yes. I, I, I have a question for the board. Last, last, when we had the last meeting, this issue of the legality of this came up. Now, I think everybody that's commenting on it, with the exception of Mr. Gillis, is not an attorney. And one of the things that was discussed by the board at the last meeting was that it was going to go to town council and was going to ask for an opinion. That was discussed at the meeting. So I'm, I'm trying to understand now why, if that was discussed at the last meeting and the legal issue was brought up, why the board hasn't gone to town council to get town council to render an opinion especially since there's a, a question raised and if the and if this goes through and it leaves us the only option to try to take a legal route that means that the abutters as residents and taxpayers of the town are going to face a hardship because the town's not using its own resources that it has to to check something out i mean you're you're putting now you're putting the burden on us the, the second thing is um, and I'm not sure if I understood this correctly, but I think, Mr. Olenoff, you had mentioned that if they put the driveways too close to the corner that it would be in violation of the subdivision control laws. Now, one interesting thing is this plan is supposed to have two-foot contours based on what's in the, in the application for the entire property, including lot number eight. And, and that is the steepest lot. Now, interestingly enough, they're not willing to change the location of the driveway to the house because it's their, their right to not have to do so. But the reason why is they said there's a stone retaining wall there and it would be, it would be an issue to, to change that driveway. If they have to bring a driveway for that house down onto either Westfield Street or to Summer Street, there is a tremendous gradient a, a very large grade change. So if they aren't even willing to do something in the back, there's a lot in the, in the back, I'm kind of curious about the front. There are a lot of things that are being said that are very contradictory, which, uh, which is of great concern to me as a resident of the town, as an abutter, in as an abutter with standing, and as somebody that's going to be affected by this. And 
And the, it's not only the safety of the future people that are here, it's also the safety of the people that are actually there. So, I'm, but I, I, I would like to really find out though why town council hasn't, hasn't been questioned on this because it did come up at the last meeting and it was supposed to happen. And you know, I think it's interesting now that that hasn't happened and we're commenting on, on the, the laws say what the laws say. It's not what any of us think, it's what the laws actually say. And if it goes before a judge, he's gonna make a decision on what the intent of the law is. It doesn't matter what any of us in this room happen to think. And we at least have counsel in the town and I'm, and I'm still baffled why the council hasn't <coughs> been, this hasn't been brought before them. Thank you. We, well, again, repeating what I said, if you put driveways in closer to that required distance, that's not a problem because they're driveways. The subdivision controller only prevents subdivision roadways from being closer. And this, this is not a subdivision roadway. The driveways would be driveways, not subdivision roadways. The shared driveway is still a driveway. Make one other point. Sure. <clears throat> if, if it turns out that three separate driveways have to be built, that's not going to prohibit the Mohammeds from continuing to think there's a private easement on that driveway. Matter of fact, everybody could have a private easement on that driveway and still share that driveway and, and wouldn't fall under the planning board's purview or conditions being set in the special permit. So just because they get forced into file an A&R plan with Just because I, I'm not doing this as a threat, I'm just trying to make the reality of what's going to happen if this doesn't get approved. Mm -hmm. If we are forced to do three driveways and file an A&R plan, it's clear it'll be approved and it's pretty black and white, then it doesn't prohibit that driveway to be used as a private easement in a shared driveway. I'm talking about the one out to Summer Street, not not the other one. All right, so you're saying you could have uh, the three driveways onto Summer Street and two easements, one out the back and another where the no, not where the this back. is drawn. I'm just saying the Mahanas, sorry, they can continue to use this. They want a private easement and a right to use that easement. It's not going to change it. Okay. All right, so the. Uh, if they built three driveways onto Summer Street, they could still have those driveways connected to that easement. Not necessarily connect them, but is there yeah, well, well, a shared driveway is a, is a driveway that goes out to the street. If you connect driveways on the property between neighbors, that's not a shared driveway, and we have no control over right. that. It's that's private. private. <laughs> so they, they could do that. They could actually connect those so all three lots could be using that uh, easement. Why would you do that? That, that? You wouldn't. Like that's what I'm saying, like that's, like I don't even know why we're talking about that, you, why would you do that? But I thought the, um, I thought, what was, what was the answer to the question of, it seems like a burden of, of creating three driveways would be greater than moving the easement so that it just goes to no, we don't have lot A. Like you said that there was a burden. I don't, I haven't, I haven't walked that. Um, but what is the response to that? There's only one way to get to that easement. It is through lot eight right now with this plan. So what's, what's the difference between those people driving up onto, the, what, this is private pro, this is private property. This is all lot eight. This all belongs to the behind. Yes, excuse me, please speak the into the microphone. This is the Mohana's property. Why would they allow people to go through their property every day? I mean, even if you move the driveway over here, these people could drive up and still drive through. If, if somebody's going to use the driveway. It, that seems less likely, though. It's a little less likely. but It's it, a lot less likely. What, do you, would you pr like people to drive through your property, neighbors? I mean, why would anybody allow that to happen? No, what I'm wondering, what is the, you're talking about, you, you were saying to, to create three, three driveways off of summer, you'd be willing to do that. 
Um, but it seems like if you had the, the easement going straight to eight so that it's less likely for the other properties. They don't drive up here. They, they park right here. They don't drive their cars up into there. They, once in a while they park in this spot over here. But they, so what would be the purpose of having it over there? That isn't where they drive their vehicles. In the, in the end, if it's, if it's an A and I with three driveways, there's no restrictions on anything. It's totally up to the Mahan. That just seems like a, a greater burden mm -hmm. to me. It, it may be. I mean, we haven't, I haven't seen the plan for that yet, but that seems it's more It's got burdens. it right there, so I think we all like to see it, yeah. Yeah, show it. I can see, it's all, <laughs> see it well from here. Well, we have to look at all the alternatives before mm -hmm. we present any plans. Um, this is... These are the graded driveways for lot seven and lot eight. Uh, you guessed right, Steve, this is a serpentine who has one switchback to get to lot eight. These are both 15% driveways. These are both perfectly doable driveways. If we submitted an A&R plan for the three lots, this is what we would build. This house out to the rear would enjoy the driveway that's already out there. Lot eight can use this driveway or they can continue to use their access as they always have out through the back. It's simple. The board has no jurisdiction over it whatsoever. Uh, I personally favor it. The, the property owner would prefer the common drive. That's why we're pursuing it. So two of them are already connected. So it wouldn't be too hard to connect the third one if you really wanted. Right. So. Can I just show the original plan? This is the final plan. The one I have. These are the two lots that were laid out originally. Lot two and lot one. So there was a house out front in the original plan that was approved. And then there was a house. There's a building envelope right here. The house could have been placed right here. So there was a house out back and a house out front. So how, how, would, these, how would these any different in burdening this easement? The driveway for this house would have went right in here. And, and the other one, driveway is going to come in here where this driveway that we're proposing is going to connect to the shared driveway. So how would this not overburden the easement and somehow our plan does? I, I don't understand that. The new house is back here. So he's the on new the house is right here. The new house is here. It's on no, it's on this it's side right, of the it's right it's here. on this side of the, the driveway connection is over closer here. to here. Can I just finish? Can I just finish? Thank you. So the house could have been placed right here. The driveway connection is gonna be here. This house back here, the driveway connection is right here. It's the same spot. There's no change. There's no more it's no more easier in this original plan that was approved to come out here. And again, why would a house, same with our lot, somebody that's going to come out and tie into the shared driveway here, why would they drive all the way back in here? What would be the purpose? All right, John, we're going to go back to your seats. We were just up here to take a look at the plans. If you have any questions, you can step to the podium. So there isn't <coughs> much difference. With the locations of the driveways in the previous plan, Uh, thank you. A quick question: Is this a what is the voting format for this type of approval? Is it a majority or a supermajority? You need four affirmative votes to approve a special votes. permit. Okay. I have a question. If, if that original plan works so well, their whole reason for coming here in the narrative they state that they were unable to sell the subdivision because of the configuration of the lots. Now they had an approval for this. They chose not to record it, not to put it into effect. They, they could have gone out when they got the plan approved and recorded it, and they would have been paying taxes on three lots while they were trapped on the house plus the two lots. Somebody made a conscientious decision when it got approved the first time to not go and record it at the registry, which they could have based on the decision. And they, they did whatever they did, said they couldn't sell it. Now they're coming back with a new plan because they said they couldn't sell it because it was, it was too expensive. That original plan also had a six inch water main that came up into this property with a fire hydrant up there and the house services, oh, yes it did. If I, Speak to the board, sir. It, it, I'm sorry. The original, the original mm. plan had a six-inch water main. 
the house services were off that off of that and there was a fire hydrant up on the up on the property so the original plan put together by Beals and Thomas it, it it went through but it was never acted upon and they kept renewing it and then they finally let it lapse and it and it doesn't it does not depict what's here I mean so I'm I, the more I listen to this, the more I get confused on the stories. Because the story, th this story on this project is just constantly evolving. And, and so as an abutter, just, and, so and, and I, as an abutter. I think, uh, I, I think I'm going to interrupt because I think that we've heard enough on this issue. Um, it's difficult, it's a difficult issue. But I have a procedural question. If we were to, uh, if we have a couple of potential motions here, could we vote? Um, on both of them, or is it is it one kind of thing? We need four votes to approve the special permit. Mm -hmm. My inclination is to make a motion to deny the special permit um, and to see if there's any further discussion about that. Um, <coughs> and then if that fails, then we would tighten up the approval and try again with the motion to approve it with a lot of more conditions. Right. You could you could do that. You could make a motion to deny, and then if you um, and so you would just have to be careful how you vote if you, to support it you would be denying it um, if you voted against you would be against the denial and you would want to support it well I guess I just have <coughs> one additional well, comment because it only would take a majority vote to deny it oh, right. because okay. you wouldn't have a super majority vote to approve it mm. right okay Good. Okay. motion to approve and it, did, it doesn't carry with four votes, then you can make another motion to approve with conditions. But if you're looking to deny it, the motion would still be to approve, but then you would vote against that motion. May I make a 10 second comment? Uh, just to comment on the original plan. The original plan wasn't opposed as this one was because Mr. Muhana uh, made an agreement that he would remove the easement and then after it was approved, he didn't. And that's why many of these arguments that were not raised 11 years ago are being raised uh, at this time. Thank you. Thank you. That's, that's helpful background. I guess. Yeah, I, mean, oh. I don't recall that. That the easement was going to be removed. Does that show on the, no, on the last one? It, it doesn't show on the plan. It was a personal promise he made to my wife and I when we were not in favor of it, and that's why um, we didn't oppose it the way it's being opposed now, because okay. we were told that that easement would uh, not be there, um, and and that that that's that's why this time around, and and if you are going to put any restrictions in there, I'd ask you to put the speed bump back in because that'll slow down many of these. Uh, trailers that may wish to get through there. That's one of the reasons they don't want it so that the landscape is everybody else can still go right through there. And to your point, yes, you can go, it's flat area, you were there, you go right up the side to that, just hook it to one house, and it's not an easement for the other two, but it's clear they don't want to do that so that everybody has the right to use it. So, not uh, the right, but the ability. Right. So, again, we, if that was agreement he made with you, the planning board wasn't aware of that when we made the uh, you right, right. So, so that was not part of it. Uh, and then actually, another remedy, of course, you as neighbors, you can always have is is try to purchase the easement back from they the owner. The Mohanas are willing to sell the easement. They're willing to sell it. So, I mean, that's an easy solution for you. Is I mean, and that's what <laughs> a lot of neighbors do. Is is they have a problem, they they buy off the problem by purchasing that. The easement or, or whatever the pro problem is. I had that discussion with him the first time he came up with his plan. He flatly denied that he would sell it. Period. He just told me I have it ready. Let, let's see it. All right. Well, I just have one, one, maybe one last comment from me. Um, the latest plan, I think, is the the best plan you put together to date. Frankly, um, it's. Exactly, and I think that's the only. And unfortunately, the, I think the board needs to focus on what is before us, and not this checkered history. Um, if it's checkered, I'm not really sure. To be totally honest, um, I don't really know. But the plan we have before us is the plan on the screen, and if we think, uh, you know, this is a better plan than the uh, than the A and R plan that was just previewed to us, um, you know, then so vote. But I, uh, 
I would ask for someone to make a motion of some sort. Can I make a comment for us? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, so <coughs> if we don't get a vote to approve this a special permit, that means we're denying it and we have to come up with the reasons for denial. And uh, and Abby's come up with I'll probably never find that sheet now. I got one, I got one for you. Yeah. Uh, right, so these three reasons, but really they're all the same, and it has to do with uh, the fact that it would overburden the uh, <coughs> easement. And uh, so it's really only one reason to deny it. Uh, and I'm not sure how well that would, I'm, again, I'm not an attorney or anything, but I'm not sure how well that would hold up if they wanted to contest that. Uh, because given all the conditions where we would put in the approval, uh, that there would be uh, no overburdening of that. There would no increased use of it. There would be less because uh, of all the conditions that we would, would put on there. And it's, uh, you know, this always comes up. People say, well, they're just going to ignore it or you can't enforce it. Uh, you can say that about any rule, regulation, uh, or law. You know, why should we have it? They're just going to enforce it. Why put a speed limit on this road? Because people are just going to speed. You know, uh, why do we, you know, why is it against the law to rob a bank? Because banks get robbed every day. Uh, but you've got to say, look, th there is a method. We have conditions here. Uh, I don't think using that, the fact that something, that the conditions we will put in would be ignored and would be uh, occasionally or often uh, not enforced, uh, that's, I don't think, is a, is a valid reason for denial. <clears throat> Can I just comment briefly? I can give you four on the first purpose of the, uh, of the bylaws. One, it doesn't promote the general welfare of the town. Two, it doesn't protect the health and safety of the inhabitants. Three, it doesn't encourage the most appropriate use of land throughout the town. Four, it doesn't preserve the cultural and historical heritage of the community. And five, it doesn't protect the natural environment. And six, it's a, sub, you know, a, a way to try to get around the subdivision law. I understand what y your point on that, but from the attorneys I spoke to, I don't do this type of law. Uh, I'm told that, it, that it's, it's not legal. So there are six reasons, plus the safety of the inhabitants. And again, with, with any, everything we do here, is always a balance. Again, and we agree that that would make things more difficult for you. And if uh, they didn't, if if they violated the conditions of the special permit and left the gates open and drove vehicles down there, that would would be a safety factor mm -hmm. for that street. But you have to balance that against the safety factor for tra traffic on Summer Street. The, the tra traffic on Summer Street, and there's a lot more of that, uh, would would be lessened by having three driveways, particularly because they get closer and closer to the intersection there. Uh, so all of those things you mentioned, if you look at, if you focus on Summer Street, they are beneficial to the town. While they may not be beneficial to you, uh, I think that the planning board is always has to balance uh, who gets the most benefit and, and, and you can't always have something that is beneficial for everyone. There's always someone who is affected uh, in some way. We do our best to mitigate those things. And in this case, we are mitigating those by putting up all those conditions with the gates and, uh, uh, and, and the enforcement procedures we have in place for that, the additional signs, all those things. We can, and again, we can go back and, and add even a few more. I want to discuss that. Uh, <clears throat> but but I think we have to look at at the uh, the overall benefit for the town, which means the Summer Street, the use of Summer Street, and the safety on Summer Street, and and absolutely minimize uh, any other uh, problems that may come up to to, to the neighbors. And I think uh, the, all the conditions we have does that. <clears throat> I guess I would also add that maybe 
slightly contrary to my remark just recently about considering the planets on the screen, maybe the the more appropriate thing to be to consider is to consider the comparison between this plan and the ANR plan, uh, against which we have absolutely no ability to um, restrict or to condition um, effectively. So, uh, sort of, you know, along along with Steve's remarks, I mean, there is sort of a balance um, in all these decisions, unfortunately, and it's. Uh, a bit of a give and take. Um, so, are there any further uh, questions from the board or comments from the public? So again, <coughs> can we review the condition number two and see if you can strengthen that even more? Conditioner, oh sorry, I'm on the wrong thing. Uh, I mean, it, it states it's the easement uh, to be for personal use and, and benefit of the residents of Ward 8 and emergency. Actually, uh, you want to just pause, maybe. I'll just read the condition out loud and follow. I, I don't think everyone, everyone has this in front of there. So just by way of background, town, uh, town planner prepared some draft motions by which from which we could operate tonight if, if the need arose. The second condition of the um, motion for approval that was suggested reads as follows. The easement on the proposed lot eight out the rear of the property shall be for the personal use and benefit of the residents of lot eight and for emergency vehicles access only. No delivery trucks, landscape trucks, or trailers are permitted to use the easement to access any lots, nor shall the easement be used for transportation of or temporary storage of construction or demolitions material during the build out of any of the lots. If additional permits are required, such as for earth material movement, these permits shall incorporate this as a condition. Which number is that? Two. You might be reading the findings. Second page. Condition. Sorry. <laughs> it's findings also, but yeah, second page. And, and when was this submitted? I prepared this um, yesterday. I sent yeah. it to the board and updated it today. This is a draft motion. This is not a something that's distributed to the public typically, right? It's right. Something for our personal functioning. Now, mostly because it changes so rapidly sometimes. <laughs> right. Anyway, Steve, you had some possible... Right, so so it's actually saying there personal use and and, and uh, do we need to define that better? And so, because we, I think we want to make it clear because it says no delivery trucks, landscape trucks, so I think uh, trailers, I think you, we should add uh, any uh, contractor uh, vehicles. I'll get an all encompassing term in there to indicate it's, it's only vehicles uh, owned and operated by the owner of Lot 8. Owner, owner of Lot 8, right. So I, I think for the personal use. Benefit, you know, and, and for uh, Is it registered to the owner of body? Yes. Yeah. So I think we just add a second sentence. Uh, those vehicles shall only be personal. Well, we can say, uh, what did I just say? The personal. Uh, th these should be vehicles uh, for the. I don't think we have to get registered, but just as long as it's 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 personally used and operated by the by the uh, residents of Lot Eight, should be enough. Okay. And then no no delivery trucks, landscape trucks, trailers, or Contractors, service vehicles are permitted to use the easement lots. I think down, uh, just to clarify it, on number four, where it says if the gate is open, the owner shall immediately replace the plastic strap. I think we should just say the owner shall immediately 
close the gate and replace the plastic strap. Okay. I hate to have, have too many signs, but I, Oh, again, the the, the, the signs we said. Right, we so I had those. noted here yeah. an additional condition to add the sign that the um, on the gates, on both gates, um, that the gate be closed at all times. And and maybe, I have to keep adding more and more signs, but for lot nine, at the end of their driveway, where it meets the shared driveway, we could have a sign that says right turn only. <laughs> Comes at an angle, so it's it's pretty obvious. But it, and I don't know how much more we could add. And you want to have any more suggestions? Um, Would the applicant be comfortable with the speed bump making a making a resurgence? Sure. Okay, I'd like to. Okay. We did have a condition number nine that there should be a speed bump located or on the emergency access easement. Okay. Maybe maybe state located. Visible from the from the turnaround from the cul-de-sac or from the turnaround, whatever we're referring it to. Oh, you're going to say the space lab. Space lab. Well, if you paint it bright yellow, maybe. I, I think uh, putting a halfway down the street would probably be the most <laughs> bothersome place to put it. In the middle, between the two the gates. Middle. Right, between the two gates, halfway between the two gates. Because the first time you drive your landscape truck down there at high speed, you'll hit it and all your gear will fly off. What's your what's your thinking? If you can't no, see I it, what does no, what do does it do? No, no, <coughs> assuming assuming they had opened the gate and closed the gate and all that, we were just making it one more burden on them, which is going over the speed bump, and and the and the place where the speed bump would be the most <laughs> annoying would be when you get to the maximum speed, which is halfway down the driveway. All right, halfway down, if that's okay by you. Okay. <clears throat> and, then, and then I had highlighted um, a number seven about possibly removing the pavement, but I know that hasn't been agreed to. Um, it's come up earlier, so could. I'm. I don't. F I don't feel like that. Does, I don't feel yeah. that that's necessary. Okay. And then tonight you had also added, let's see, a thirty-foot. Um, Landscape buffer for on the lot nine. Right. On the rear. Oh, and the uh, on well, the rear, the rear on two sides. The rear, and I think the south side. Because you're showing it, yellow, you're showing, you're showing it on three sides of the property. Well, I'm going to right across. But you want to. That's where the trees are. Well, if it was at the re if it was at the apex of this angle or the along the line you just declared, we would want to make it more like a hundred feet, I think, on that edge, if we're trying to preserve the trees, because thirty would allow you to cut most of them down. But sort of a the might be a nuance. I mean, I don't think it was going to cut them down, but no, from the I think we were saying the thirty from the property line is how you would define it, right? So if we said 30 feet along the southerly from the southerly property line and 100 feet from the, I guess westerly property line, does that make sense, or does that sound too burdensome? It seems excessive. Well, I'm just I'm scaling. Well, maybe 75. About 50. 50. Yeah, 30 and 50 seems okay to me. So you're saying 30 feet from the... From the property line, from out from here. The, from the rear of the property line. Yeah, so it would be... And the two sides would be 30 feet. Actually, on this side, what the trees don't really... They're, they're, really there. they're not really there. Yeah. Uh, so we're only concerned because about these 30 two. Feet is gonna, I'm sorry, 30 feet is going to bring you along here. That's right. what I'm trying to get you to, yeah. That's more than we have trees right now. All right, so what is it? We are the trees, about 25 feet? Yes. All right, so 25 feet along. 50 in the rear. And 50 yeah. in the rear. 50 on the rear, that's good. Yeah. Okay. Okay. 
And what is the, just getting back to enforcement penalty, what is the current penalty? So today, the, a neighbor finds the gate open, they call you up, Abby. What, what happens and what's the fine and who decide, determines the fine? That is, the building commissioner is the zoning enforcement officer, and he's just adopted a policy. Um, he can fine up to $300 per day, but in his policy, the first notification is um, a warning letter, and then a second um, letter sent about the um, fining, um, and then after that, the actual fine can be issued of $300. And do today. we have a tr current track record? Like, what is our... How rigorous is Westwood at enforcing this? Because I see that's the uh, that seems to be the uh, the only enforcement we have now is that the financial penalty. So do we have right. any track record? Um, yeah. So at town meeting in May, we yeah. had just increased this from 100 to 300 yeah. because the building commissioner was trying to encourage timely compliance. With 100, would sometimes not be immediately responded to. So so he did. Um, request and the planning board had proposed and town meeting adopted the up to 300 amount um, and, and repeat in, in this policy repeat offenders can be um, issued $300 fine um, after being notified so usually people do respond after getting the written notification a lot of the most common violation that we've we've had is when they just don't know the zoning for example signage is one of them okay is there any other comment is there any other commentary on this on either the findings of the approval motion or the conditions or the waivers um, I, f I forgot in the what I had provided you there was one more waiver that was needed and that was the exterior lighting plan um, that was a submittal requirement in the um, special permit rules and regs and then I would also just add on to condition 11 that I drafted to include the um, the shared driveway be maintained by the um, property owners the paving and the shoulders. <coughs> this condition, sorry, which condition? To 10. Oh, 10, oh, sorry, I think it's at 11. Just expanding that a little bit more. So condition 17, the shared driveway shall not be extended and shall not connect to any other streets or ways except where it originates on Summer Street. Okay. Um, so would that also preclude the shared driveway from connecting to other driveways and things that are constructed. What I was thinking is, could there be a condition that um, says no other driveways ever? Because at least if one yeah, of the motivations for wanting to um, come up with a uh, with something here is to prevent three driveways on Summer Street, it seems like we ought to guarantee that. I think there's Good a stipulation point. that it prevents any new lots. Right, but I think what Dave is saying, if these lots are created, if they wanted to have their own driveways, yeah, I think we could. <coughs> yeah. um. Sorry, yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I think you could. Add it. Only connects the streets to the yes. two driveways, well, the three driveways as shown in the plan. Or we can say one existing on two proposed driveways as shown in the plan. Two proposed. Now, what I was suggesting was that we say, no, you can't, you know, there will never be two additional driveways on to Summer Street if this is accepted. In the future, yeah. In the future. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think that is a, is a separate condition. Okay, all right, I'll add that. Say, okay. uh, no additional driveways shall be. Shall be uh, made connecting, you know, to Summer Street. Okay. Yeah. Well, actually, just say no, no, no additional driveways on the property. 
other than those shown on the uh, on the on the plans. Yeah. That way they'd have to come back for any <laughs> any kind of you know. Shown on the sheer drive. Yeah, on the sheer okay. drive plan, right? There should be no additional driveways other than those sh as shown on the shared drive plan. Anything further from anyone? Do I hear a motion? Um, so how are we voting again? So we're voting for approval. I just want to know. We're, yeah, we're voting for approval. So if you are in favor of the intended motion, you would vote yay or an aff affirmative. And if you're not, you would then you would vote nay. Okay. Um, or abstain if you wish. And I then suppose. if it's and then if it's <coughs> a and if it gets approval, there's a second element to this. But well, we need because to approve the waivers regardless. Right. Well, if it's denied, you don't need to. But okay. we, we should we should just go ahead and I'll move that we approve the the waivers as requested for uh, what are they? Traffic impact study, no, storm impact water study, report, report, and the exterior lighting plan. Those three things. Yeah. Okay. I have a motion to approve the waivers as uh, as just described. Do I hear a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, so I'll move that we approve, uh, grant a special permit for a shared driveway uh, with the conditions that we've uh, laid out here and as uh, we've been amended here. Okay, I have a motion for approval of the Shared driveway application at 480 Summer Street with the aforementioned um, waivers and conditions. Do I hear a second? I'll second the motion. Okay, I have a f motion and a second. I just have one. I'll ask for any additional discussion, but I have a, 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 a just a comment for the applicant. Are you? Do you feel you're substantially familiar and? And, aw and aware of all these conditions we're imposing upon you <laughs> and you agree to them generally okay all right so i have a motion and a second um all those in favor say aye 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 all those opposed opposed no Nay. okay we have a vote of three to two two to three two to three um two to three for approval so We've effectively denied the application. Well, I move that we reconsider the vote. Uh, I mean, if, if we deny this, again, you have to give a basis for a denial, yeah. and, and it has to be something that, that uh, you know, given it's a matter of record, these conditions that we propose. And uh, <coughs> I think these conditions really do uh, provide overall benefit for the town and do the best we can do for the neighbors uh, to uh, to reduce and to the ev to the extent we can uh, the problems that they have with the uh, with that access road I mean we we're, we, we're eliminating everything all the trucks except for the personal vehicles of that one lot which is a lot less than they have right now and gives them a solution to what they have right now. If that doesn't happen, then they'll continue to have that problem. And the overall benefit to the town is that we, uh, we have to consider what this does to Summer Street, and that's the whole purpose of the uh, shared driveway. We kind of got away from the purpose here. The purpose of, of the shared driveway is to increase traffic safety on Summer Street. It's not, uh, and normally we don't have a situation where there is an existing problem somewhere else. Nevertheless, uh, I mean, we, we seem to be focusing solely on that problem. 
and the, and the focus should be on Summer Street and the traffic safety there. W nevertheless, we've done everything we can to lessen that problem, and we are lessening that problem. Uh, but we don't have a, we do not have that proposal in our hand. I don't have a proposal for those three driveways. You're talking about something that, that we don't have in our hands to look at. Well, you're talking about. We, we saw an engineer drawing, which and the end, and that the question is, can they physically put in driveways? Because the town can't deny someone a driveway to a a lot. Exactly. And so the question becomes, can they physically engineer a driveway to go down from the house to Summer Street? And I think that drawer, drawer, the uh, plans show that they can do that. And they also show, in order to do that, in one, particularly on one lot, it would but who's reviewed really that plan, Steve? That's a, that's a plan that was printed out and provided to us. Does that, well, does that plan have an engineer stamp on it? Or no? I could put it on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just, just yeah, a question. I have, just I have a question. confidence in the engineer yeah. that he can do that and he will do that. Well, uh, and that's that's a, a valid plan. <laughs> And, okay, so we can ask Beta. Beta, uh, did, did, did you look at that plan and does it look legitimate and that feasible? Yeah. I haven't, uh, I haven't okay. shown it to me. Right. But in general. It's a study right. plan, I know it can yeah. be done. That's right. Right. But in general, it, it's engineering, it can be engineered to do that, to have three driveways. You received in your packet a couple of weeks ago the A and R plan showing the creation of the lots with the frontage, not with the level of detail for the driveways, but the lots can be created to meet the zoning. And I, I'm, I don't, and I don't, I don't see how. No, you know, again, no, no other plan attempts to address all the issues that the neighbors are bringing up, that all the issues that we've been bringing up about Summer Street and the safety impact, the scenic road as aspects, the destruction of trees. No other plan does it better than this one. So I just, I don't, I don't see how we can wrap our mind around saying, well, let's just see what happens. Because that's effectively what we're saying by denying this plan. Because effectively, an engineer is telling us that he can do a plan which basically needs no approval effectively from us, aside from a rubber stamp. And that's a little you know, distressing, frankly. Yeah, well, <coughs> we would have no control. The a and R, we have no control over the a and R. We have to approve it. No public hearings. And with no public hearings, no nothing. And f for them to do the driveway, they wouldn't be b before the planning board at all. They would just apply for DPW and get a curb cut. No real curb there anyway, but they would have to apply for a curb cut. They would get the curb cut, and they can put in any kind of driveway. And again, there are no standards for driveway. They can put in as steep a driveway as they want. They may not get up their own driveway in the winter, but they could still build it. Well, I think we have we have these um, the draft uh, proposed denial motion containing these our reasons, but I mean a fourth reason can be that after having considered all of these mitigating rules that we could have devised, after considering all of these things, we may have very well have concluded that this that after doing all of this, it did not adequately protect the neighborhood. I mean, it's. Uh, you can go either way with this. Like you can say, like taking action, not taking action. By approving it, we create a, we have something in front of us that we know they're going to build, and we felt that it was necessary to come up with all of these conditions to try to deal with the consequences of that. And we looked at it and we said, it's still not buying it. And so I think you can make that as a, as it's an argument of, as a fact that um, we considered this and it's. You know, these are the reasons for denial, and um, it doesn't just because we had all these possibilities of conditions, we could judge that those conditions in practice wouldn't be adequate. And, and again, as I repeated before, I don't think that would hold up because we're, you're basing that whole premise on we've created these conditions, and we're saying the conditions aren't any good simply because they would be ignored, they wouldn't be enforced. and. You know, we are the town. We would enforce them. On the issue of enforcement, the gate's been open for 11 years. 
So there is no enforcement. There is no compliance. In addition to which, there's uh, no one there's curb cut, there's no there's discussion. No, is there, there, there's no restrictions on it now. Okay. One curb cut, three. There are restrictions. For 11 uh, years. The, see, gate, he never, the gate's he never supposed to be closed. Plan, right. Which means he never had to close the gate. Right. And he didn't no, close the, the gate. The, the, the original plan was the gate was there and it's to be closed and it hasn't been followed for 11 years. Right. And, and again, there's no obligation when... And what he did was he didn't uh, file the plan simply because there's no need to until the property is sold and the property is never sold. So, uh, it's in land court, so yeah. it has to go through a process. And I, w I would add that, you know, the only, not the on the, the only conditions, the, the conditions we're imposing on this project are not solely what's on this paper. Those are the conditions. That physical drawing, engineered, detailed, contemplated, designed, rethought, that is the largest condition here. If we let it, let it ride, zero. We won't even see the plan. So I'm sorry, but you know, to focus on these things, which are really procedural, and frankly, you, everyone's, you, I, I don't disagree. Enforcement is a problem. You know, you know, land, you know, property owners you know, blow off all kinds of violations all the time. I see, you know, five cars parked in driveways weekly and no one complains about it. So yeah, it will come down to enforcement. But frankly, the largest enforcement is on that screen. So you know, to see, to imagine that Summer Street intersection at Westfield Street with three driveways piercing the, piercing the trees is a, a far greater violation of the town than, than any one of the things on this sheet. <coughs> So, uh, <laughs> can I just make a suggestion? Mm -hmm. It's clear that the members who are voting against this don't believe that the property will be developed. So why don't you accept the vote that you have now to deny the special permit, but don't close your hearing. Continue your hearing, allow the applicant to submit an A&R plan. If the board endorses the A&R plan, then you have a reality of construction and you may think differently. If the board chooses not to endorse it, because the board does not determine that there's adequate access to each of those lots, and that's within your right <coughs> to decide, then those members who don't think that there's an ability to develop this will have a reason to think that. I think you're at a point now where you just don't have a conclusion. You suspect it couldn't be developed, but you don't, you can't prove that. Um, because an A&R could come to you next week and you may feel obligated to sign it if you do believe there's adequate access. I think that's the question that hasn't been addressed yet. The last time this was before the board, that's what the focus was on, whether there was adequate access off the frontage of the A&R lots. And the planning board at that time determined that there was and determined that the shared driveway was a preferable development mechanism than the, than the individual driveways. <coughs> this board has not had the opportunity to review the A and R plan in detail, and I think reviewing that would help you to to come to consensus on the decision. If the board is not willing to endorse an A and R, then you believe that there's no possibility of developing these lots. The applicant could challenge that decision, um, but I think you're you're at the point where you have to make a decision one way or the other. So you you're denying the special permit, but there's still the question of whether it could be developed as three lots or not. So I'd recommend that rather than close your hearing and have to re-notice and advertise this again, you let your decision stand but keep the hearing open to allow for reconsideration after you've seen an A&R plan and made a decision on that. So sorry, Nora, given, so what, you're, what, 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 we, what we would be saying is that we will, the vote that we just took would basically be sort of open, I guess, f to reconsideration after we see the plan provided, a plan is provided, of so, course, so right? Right, so that yeah. decision stands, but right. as long as the hearing is open, mm -hmm. you, each of you has the opportunity to make a motion to reconsider if you feel there's reason to reconsider. The only reason I would think you'd reconsider is if some of the members who are voting against this come to believe that the lots could be developed with individual driveways off of Summer Street and that that would be a more negative situation than the proposal you have here. Mm -hmm. Two of you clearly believe that now and three of you don't, mm -hmm. but you haven't seen that A&R plan and you haven't made findings of whether there's adequate actual access. 
So I think that if you were to make those findings and come to a decision, you'll either have a minimum of three members have to sign an ANR for it to become effective, or you won't. And if you don't, then you fail to endorse the ANR, and it either goes forward or it's challenged. Okay, that's helpful. Thank you very much. And normally on an ANR plan, you don't <laughs> put out detail the, the driveway, but I, in this case, it obviously would be to your benefit to do that. Yeah. So, I, well, you, yeah, you have one plan just in an ANR and the other plan with the driveway, but the you driveway one, yes. yeah, but the driveway plan would be, become the ANR plan. Essentially, or no, the no, ANR just shows meets and bounds. Because, because, right, it, so it, the it has to be. Right. Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay. There's no requirement of practicality on the ANR, right? I mean, if, the, if you have the frontage. Frontage and area. Because otherwise, we wouldn't even be here if we didn't have the frontage. And the, if an ANR was not approvable, then we'd trust subdivision yeah. control law would right. be triggered. Yeah. So, sure, we can see what happens. But. So if you keep the hearing open, you would continue it. Yeah. So we have to denied A and R's because we didn't, didn't think it was a, the property was accessible because you know, like there's a cliff there or something. In this there's, case, there's case law regarding threshold access. Yes. And, and there's also case law considering illusory frontage. We don't have either of those. So. What was the What was the term you just used? Illusory. Oh, illusory. Okay. So he said delusory, and I was like, well, that sounds. Yeah, so you, you actually, all together. You, you do have a, a street that really is accessible to the property, and. No wetlands. And, uh, right, no wetlands there, and uh, there are no physical barriers because your driveway engineering that you presented. And you present that when we, you present the A&R plan, mm -hmm. and then our consultant can check that out also with the, yeah. when they check out the A&R itself. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I guess uh, I move we continue the hearing until. Oh, I just uh, yeah. Until well, I, I do have one additional. I do one final comment. I, I I'm not and granted I I concede that we do not have the ANR plan before us, but the majority of this discussion has been about this easement road and their the use thereof and putting controls and restrictions on it. We will have absolutely no way to do that with an ANR plan, it will remain and continue to be probably used the way it is now with no no further restriction on it and with potential access by other even more houses. So so I thought I, thought I would just bring that back to the board's attention before we uh, hear a motion to, to uh, continue. Well. So do we hear a motion? <laughs> <laughs> well, we can, we can. We can reconsider. I don't think we don't have any rules about reconsideration. We can just have a motion to reconsider whenever. So I made a motion to reconsider, uh, and we can do that wherever it, as far as it gets us. Mm -hmm. So I move that we reconsider. The okay. I'll second the motion to reconsider. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor of a reconsideration? Oh, sorry, are we voting on a reconsideration? We're just well, assuming we've got a reconsideration. Yeah, All those in favor of a reconsideration of the vote to approve, say aye. 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 All those opposed? No. Opposed. Opposed. So I hear we have passed. that one actually passed. Yeah. We have a. Sorry, that's two to three to two. two. Three to two. To reconsider. To reconsider, yeah. Yep. All right. Um, <laughs> do I hear a motion to vote to move on the approval of the shared driveway application? So I will make the same motion I made before to approve a special permit with the all of the conditions that we have outlined, have we, we have written before us, and we've and the additions to it we've uh, outlined today. Can I hear a motion? Do I have a second? I will. Second the motion. Oh. All right, I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion at this point? All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 
All those opposed? Opposed. 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 Okay. It continues to be opposed. So I'll make a motion. We just continue the hearing. To probably August 22nd was your next regular meeting. I think we have to say the date and yeah. time. August 22nd, 7.30, uh, the Seven campaign meeting room at Carby Street. 7 o'clock. Second. I have a motion and a second. Do all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? I oppose. So we're four to one. <coughs> Thank you, everyone. Did a butter notices go out, or is this just a discussion?
All right, so our next item is a review and discussion of possible zoning amendments. Um, this be a formal discussion on extending local business A zone and at 529, to 529 High Street. Um, I understand we have a property owner here who's interested in being part of the discussion. Um, I was just warned by my <laughs> by Janice that we need to make sure we use the microphones because we're having a struggle, I guess, getting a clean recording. As I say all that, not into the microphone. So, <coughs> sure. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Anthony Antonellis from Sloan and Walsh. I represent uh, the landlord, John Salvatore. John's with me. Uh, John, uh, his company recently purchased the building. This is the uh, building that has Westwood Pediatrics in it. Um, John is a Westwood resident. Uh, as well as a property owner in Westwood and owns a bunch of properties on uh, on High Street and in Westwood. So this is an, an informal discussion. We'd like to um, extend the parking into the, uh, there's a residential lot that we own in that area. And the main reason we're doing that is, I don't know if you folks have been there, but it's very busy and it's mostly for uh, a safety issue for the folks that are going to the pediatrics and other medical uses in the building. It's only a Monday through Friday type of uh, building. Um, we'd like to extend into that space there, not pursue a residential option, um, and not build a home there or do anything like that. Uh, and we'd like to create a big buffer uh, for the neighborhood and we just wanted to get a sense from you folks uh, what your thoughts are rather than do a petition article we'd prefer to work with the planning board if you folks think it's a good idea as well and uh, and to have uh, the article actually come from the planning board hence why we're here for an informal discussion Any questions? So why do you feel like you need 32 more parking spaces to service a pediatric practice? Well, it's, uh, I don't know if you've been there, but it's, the, the parking is overflowing. It's not just the, it's not just Westwood Pediatrics, although Westwood Pediatrics is probably the busiest use <coughs> that we have in the building. There's also dentists and a couple other medical things, but it's, uh, I don't know if you've been over there, but it's extremely busy, and it's really a, a safety issue. What is there right now? Is it a wooded lot, or is there a home on this lot? It's, I'll show you a pretty good aerial here. It's not where I want to be at all. Mike, take a look at that. It's, that's facing from High Street. Yeah. So it's so wooded. It's the wooded lot, okay. Yeah. So there's no yeah. home there. No home. Um, it's zone residential. We is have it a buildable lot? We, we think it is with all we have to do is convey this back part and we have enough and there's enough frontage. So we think it is a buildable lot. But our, well, our preference is not to go the residential road. And the goal would be to provide the neighborhood. The neighbors with a big uh, parking, parking lot. Side. Yeah. So there'd be, there'd be parking right here and then we'd have a big buffer size on it rather than a house. It, it doesn't quite meet the minimum lot size requirement in the residential zone is 40,000 square feet so, right, right. so it's not and how much is it 37 six um, 16 so we'd have to convey in part Maybe of the back lot yeah to make it work but it what do you mean convey part of the back All right well from 541 <coughs> Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay. Oh, you, 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 you but that's you, that's um, not. How many square feet do you right, have? It's neither here nor there because he's not looking to do. We're that. not looking to do that. Yeah. I mean, we've 
they've been approached to sell the residential lot, but the the owner has no interest in doing that. So, so what we're wh I'm sorry, I guess I just not doesn't seem to be coming very clear what we're being asked to do. We're being asked if we want to extend the LBA district through that lot and yeah. to encompass all of what's marked as 529, the plan that just disappeared. Correct. Right. right so okay. To be able to, they can't construct the parking to serve the commercial uses unless the um, business zone is extended to that lot. Um, so I, so the green, the LBA would need to be extended for that lot for them to be able to construct the parking. Yep. Have you spoken with the abutters? Not yet. Wanted to get a sense from you folks first. That would be the plan, though, if, if you guys give give a general sense then we'll go speak with the abutters and have a meeting actually at the site so this is of course came up a number of years ago and uh, as I recall I think the planning board was in favor of it I think the planet back I remember it too it was a while ago and the planning board was in favor of it and then the owner pulled it at the last minute from town meeting and then, but they presented it as a petition article, right? A petition article, yeah. correct. And and the and the planning board was ready to make a favorable recommendation on it, uh, but there was some op quite a bit of opposition from from neighbors. Uh, so, I can I can see uh, it'd be a good idea to bring up these. To, you know, get the planning board to sponsor it rather than the uh, <coughs> have a, it as a petition article. Uh, I have a couple of suggestions. Uh, get more holistic about this because you're showing what this parking lot would look like. I think if you also included what improvements you'd have to the lot itself. Uh, in other words, there's more than enough room to add maybe a few more parking spaces in this lot and take away and put more landscaping here or maybe increase the, the buffer in the rear so then you actually have neighbors who would be in favor of it. They know that they'd have a larger buffer over here. I don't know if that neighbor there might, might like it. Uh, also notice that the, the two lots Again, we don't like to have uh, uh, our zoning uh, areas, and we like to have the, the zoning lot lines conform to the lot lines, and it doesn't on, the, on, the, on your lot and the next previous one. But actually, that, that would be a good thing if, if you extended that and showed, okay, that back remains residential, that would give the people to feel they had more protection uh, than if they had uh, commercial right up to their, to their backyard line. So that might be, and of course that little hook there, you want to keep that definitely residential mm -hmm. and just maybe extend that line down uh, to meet the, uh, the other one might be a good way of doing it. Yeah, that's, that's a excellent suggestion. We, um, I mean, John would be willing to either keep it residential or put a conservation restriction on whatever it is to I create think a buffer. If it's, if it's safe zone residential and then now how does the, that affect the buffers? The buffer goes from the, the boundary line of the lot or from the from, from the, the lot the line. So there could still be the buffer starting from the um, yes, lot line and would essentially be in that residential zone. Okay. So it uh, wouldn't so be it wouldn't, so that wouldn't affect it at all. Right. But they would have just have the feeling that it would that, be, uh, and that was one suggestion when definitely. when they met with staff was right to consider um, if if you um, sponsor a zoning article to continue it, but also keep the back portion uh, residential. Mm -hmm. so, so the growth growing the growing the lot does that open up opportunity for further development or not on that, on that site or not really. I don't, I don't know. I don't remember the setbacks and everything else for those lots. As I understand that, it, it does not. Okay. So it's, I, just, it's just for parking. Just for parking. For any, yeah, I mean, any enhancement of the building. As you, you may have noted the notion of the nature. Of the, 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 the nature of these commercial districts has been a hot-button item the past year or two, perhaps. So um, 
I could see this not getting a friendly welcome from yeah, we, some we think individuals I can think of. It, there's <coughs> I, knowing some of the abutters, I think I think we'll have some pretty good support for it um, because of the buffer and not doing the residential piece and keeping that out and having a permanent solution for the lot. People have seen this come before as. Mr. Olenoff mentioned it's been before a town meeting a number right. of times, and I think if they know that there's not going to be an extension in the building and that they're going to have a buffer and a residential zone, we think it'll get a positive right. feedback. Yeah, my question would be that is it, it will it be buildable as a, uh, as a business? Uh, right. Is it a buildable lot once you change those, those lines? So you want to come back and, <laughs> and be able to clearly demonstrate without... Uh, any doubt that you can't put another building there, you could only put a parking lot there. Right. Uh, in fact, you, you know, you want to convince the planning board first so that we could yeah. go ahead and do that. Because if, if, if I was a developer, and I'm an architect, so I know how they operate, um, I would also want to prove that if I knock down the building that's there now, I still can't. I can't build a building closer to the other end of the lot of the of the site. <coughs> okay. I'm just trying to play devil's advocate. Well, <laughs> right, right. Well, you can create that imposition by, I guess, your setbacks, right? Right. I think. So. Yeah, I think so. I mean, the, the setbacks may prove it anyway, right? So, but right. right. Well, then someone might ask if you combine the lots into one lot then could you do that and uh, right and so how would you right. prevent that from how do you happening? prevent that right yeah. wouldn't you still be pushed back into the 541 lot only that you would have the setback requirements that could get any bill so I think probably it's, it's probably self-imposed i guess i would it would sort of yeah, want to I mean, be demonstrated you, you even put in a build a, a larger building you'd have a less parking correct and the satisfied the but there's also and been enough parking now right. mm -hmm. there's also this history of underground parking so people are aware of that. So you could potentially knock down a building, put in underground parking. Yeah. So that's it. Do, that doesn't mitigate that. And the other thing too, the uh, that I noticed with the, and I know that the diagram is just in its beginning stages, is um, is showing the actual number of of trees and other type of landscapings that. Because um, when I when I look at the neighborhood just from the topographical map, I could. S if I was a neighbor in that area, I'd probably have a concern um, that that there might that you'd be looking out your window into a parking lot. Um, so you're going to be up against that with neighbors. So more information regarding the buffer. Yeah. So for instance, when I look at when I look at this, I just see one, two, three, five trees on the front, and there's just one one in the back corner. So what is it? What does it mean for that neighbor immediately behind that um, from a landscaping buffer situation? Yep. And as They're I recall, the most opposition came from the person across the street. From the other side of the street, yeah, yeah the back, because it's going to be better from the back. Sure. Yeah. That we, there won't be any any Got people it, in yeah. the back complaining because it's going to be a better buffer for the back, better buffer on the side. It drops down. Does it'll, it drop down back there too? Is that what happens? A little bit. But yeah. how is it a yeah, better? So those, those are I just would be a lot more landscaping that's reflected on that. Yeah. It's pretty thin now. Yeah. I have a different perspective, I guess. So um, how is it a better buffer from the sort of wooded lot that there is now? I know it's summer you drive by and it's very dense, but uh, how, I, I guess I would want to see a lot more of benefits to the community and neighborhood. I mean, we're talking about changing the zoning uh, to allow additional commercial development to allow a parking lot in a, in a space that uh, where a house could be built um, or I would like to see something that was you know more than just a parking lot maybe there could be a park or something like that some but I, I guess we'd want to hear if neighbors are really supportive of the idea then it would probably um, something like that but yeah my initial reaction is I'm not I'm surprised uh, I'm not excited about a parking lot uh, <laughs> You know, being built there, and especially to like change the zoning just so you can build a parking lot uh, next to this thing, um, and it bothers me that to lose any any land that could be a, a house on the land. I know it's it's under forty, it's under an acre, but um, 
those are just some thoughts that I have. Yeah, I, I think the abutters would, we're not proposing a, a home, but I don't think the abutters would support a home on that lot. They'd rather have, and we'll see what they say, but my guess is they'd rather have a good buffer than another home in that area. But right now they can't have a home. Unless, unless part of the, his lot is conveyed. Okay. Yeah, which, all right. Which again, they're not, we're not interested in doing. And I, but, but they did propose a park. For, for right. your, exactly. They did propose a park many ah, years ago there. Like part of it making like a tables and things like that and the neighbors didn't want that. Because mm -hmm. they didn't want people, you know, out there yeah, yeah. In, in their backyards. But it was proposed to have a, back in the day it was proposed to have parking. Yeah. I think it was the time before the one that got withdrawn and they were going to put some picnic tables back there for like breaks and things like that yeah, yeah. Oh. and it, it didn't really i get that catch a lot yeah, of uh, may, maybe adding a patio on to the building and make you know with along with more landscaping to make that building itself more uh, pleasant would uh, be part of that and what is the distance from the uh from the back property to where the pavement starts uh where you see uh the pavement where that that roundabout would be like what what, it's what, like about what are we talking feet. about for a distance like right here you mean yeah so the distance here that's just yeah. car that, that's just conceptual conceptual yeah yeah also, that uh, that map, I would suggest you uh, get the you know get the updated one that doesn't show the infamous Dover Terrace. Oh yes, yes, <laughs> that will be. <laughs> say that. Uh, yeah. So, isn't the infamous? Are you, are you actually parking on the next lot right now? What? Isn't it the other end down by Windsor? No. No. It's right there. Yeah. Is this is this the lot line? So right now, I there is a there, there is some parking. There's some parking on the yeah. So how does that happen? Is that just the historic thing that's been happening. It's an encroachment. Um, I don't know how long. And, and you're allowed to. How many spots are you allowed on the residential <coughs> lot? I think you can. Again, if it's 30 feet or 50 feet into the jurisdiction. Oh, oh, so you can. We could go 30 to 40, but right now I think they're only doing one, one row. One row, yeah. And that's the other choice to go like 50 feet in there as of right, or whatever it is, 30, 50. I, I don't know what it is. Where is that in our bylaw? 50 feet, lots in two districts? Yeah, that's it. So lots in two districts, you're able, able to go from the less restricted district to the more restricted district. So for the, from the commercial <coughs> district to the residential district, but only in cases <coughs> where the, the lot is divided, I believe. So the, these seem to be two separate lots. Um, I don't know if they were ever common. They were common ownership, but I don't know that they were ever joined. And where does the overflow parking go now? So what what is the situation? Like, So do you have, uh, are there people waiting for spots to open, or do they... Uh, where do they go when they're waiting? They park down by Kiara. Um, and then walk up. Walk up. So right now you have like 30 spaces on the lot. And then not quite 20 on the next lot, it looks like. So that that's that a considerable amount of parking. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, I would say, boy, it would be nice and big advantage if 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 we didn't have that row of cars parked right along the street. Uh, that became landscaping. Uh, so there was landscaping along the entire length of the street there. 
uh, that would be a big improvement over what you have now. The most important thing is 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 what you see along the road, and and, and that that would enable you to to move those cars into the new lot, and 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 have that landscape there, and the person across the street. And I wonder, is that same person still live there or not? Or he does. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, maybe he'll find it more attractive. Right. So there's the argument, of course, comes up every time is, uh, you know, this is spot zoning. And I'm not a professional planner, but you've never, I'm sure you've never even heard of that term. Right, you have, but, but I mean. It's not an official term. Spot zoning does not. It doesn't exist. It's continuing existing right. zone. Yeah. And, and, but if, if there is such a thing, and there really isn't. But <laughs> there is this concept of spot zoning. This is not, but people will say it is. But but yeah. <coughs> now this this is uh, really would be a way of enhancing our business district by uh, taking a lot which is now underutilized and and appropriate utilizing it and at the same time uh, really upgrading what you have there and, and making it a lot nicer and that's the goal is to yeah. enhance the safety and the traffic flow in and out of the parking get more parking and make it look better and have a buffer zone for the neighborhood to enhance the value of the building as well yeah so I so if there are other things that could come out of this, you know, as they also some of the, some of the opposition. Well, one of their favorite terms is uh, unforeseen consequences. Or, uh, is that the term? Mm -hmm. uh, unintentional. Unintentional. Unintentional consequences. Right. Uh, if it was possible, for instance, to get rip down the building and put in another building, you know, can you come up with maybe some uh, covenants that you will put, put on the property so you couldn't do that? Uh, to, so that would uh, assure people that you're not up to something else, that this is what you want to do. Or combi combine lots in the future to a future or current owner um, where you could uh, create a, uh, a larger scale on it. Because right now we're talking about changing that one lot um, in the future, and we're and we're saying that that lot is presumably unbuildable from a business standpoint. So then a year from now you can't turn that parking lot into a business. What about five years from now mm -hmm. when you combine both lots and create a larger business? So now the neighbor who thought they were getting some nice landscaping now has. Yeah, building. a building behind them. Yeah, I mean, it wouldn't matter one year, five years. You'd want to. No, I'm just, I'm just giving a hypothetical. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you just want to, you'd want to do something to show that they, uh, you know, they can't turn around and and do something which people weren't expecting. I don't know if you can restrict right. that. Well, they could put restrictions on their own property, uh, recorded on the deed. Uh, one option would be so if you expand the zoning district the local business zoning district that zoning would apply to the lot but one option could be if the planning board if you were supportive of the zoning change for a parking lot you could consider in a full application to the planning board as an eidr subject to the zoning being changed by town meeting. Now, the applicant will not want to prepare that whole application and through, go through all those plans unless you were supportive of that. But then if you did have that, if you were supportive of that, you could go to town meeting with um, a proposal and an approval ready to be constructed if the zoning were to change at town meeting. But that would be a lot of work. Isn't for that. that similar to um, what was proposed for the um, the properties around the Obed Baker house remember there was um, a attempt to rezone that to allow some parking so that a business the Obed Baker house could be turned into a business or something and I know that right. there was a, there was a, one lot was commercial one lot was residential and there was a proposal to change the um, 
zoning on the residential lot to expand the commercial lot. So very similar to this. That was generally, it was okay, but then at town meeting, um, there were concerns and about the concern cemetery. About the location of the cemetery, right? right. There's a roadway that came out of, from the cemetery on, you know, say they, actually on the commercial property, not on the residential property. So it was kind of a, um, a confused issue at town meeting. So I guess there's, there's pros and cons. If you had a complete, here's what it's going to be, um, and everyone was excited about that, that would probably help uh, to to do things but then people are always going to come back with the well what else could happen you know what are they 10 years down the road so well I think what what Abigail suggested is what we talked about um, as a way to prevent that right because it's easier for people at town meeting to understand the zoning change with a proposal a project in front of them yeah but they still might say but okay that's all approved or if they come back and mm -hmm. submit something else for approval Mm -hmm. Just don't build that. Yeah, or so, the yeah, I think you'd want to put some kind of restrictions on, on the self-imposed restrictions on the, uh, the covenant is good for 30 years. A right? condition in your EIDR approval, remembering that the approval doesn't take effect uh, unless the zoning is approved. The zoning is changed, but your approval could have a voluntary condition that requires a restriction that limits the future development. But we could only do that if we had the EIDR, right? I mean, we wouldn't we can't condition a yeah. Right. Zoning change, we know, right? Would, right. Like, right. Like, zoning change is completely unconditional. There's right. Nothing that the town meeting can condition a zone. Once yeah. it's part of a zone, it's able to be developed for any use allowed within that zone. Mm -hmm. If the EIDR imposed a condition which the owners voluntarily accepted that restricted the use and development of that property, that could be recorded in perpetuity. Right. Yeah, I mean, I think in, in concept, like I think I, I, I get it. I think it, it makes sense for the property. I just, I, we've been beat up a lot on this stuff of late, frankly. I mean, and, um, and they, you know, isn't in task force. Isn't in center task force went through an exhaustive process of, of working through the isn't in center issues, all which circled around parking, expansion of commercial, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, if you switch from SRC to LBA, you're changing all the setbacks and in most cases cutting them almost all in half. So one might argue, well, you know, maybe you can put a building there or maybe the future owner could put a building there or something to that effect. Um, so I guess that's a little bit of my hang up and why I almost want to see, if not an EIDR plan of, you know, a plan that's maybe two steps beyond this to show, okay, this is what the, you know, the, these are the setbacks would be, this is the, a, more, a more realistic layout of the parking lot that we're proposing. And maybe sh you know shadow in what a future building may look like if it's even possible kind of thing because um, it seems to me with those setbacks you could build something there you know, even with the existing building in place but it but would take some of the draw it with, with it in place yeah you could build another building seems to me just I mean based on the setbacks but I don't know that's that yeah that that's where my mind went next you probably can't park it but um, they do underground parking now. I know it's a trend, right? <laughs> it's a trend, it is. Yeah. When you don't have the space. <laughs> but I mean, it's. I'm just. I'm speaking, thinking about the public and what they would think. Right. So you're going to have to deal with that for this to for this to pass at town meeting. Um, and I just counted the car spaces. So when I look at your, the i the idea of the i concept state, it seems like the number of parking spaces may be too many. In order, in order to get the landscaping that you would need to get this digestible by the town. I just did a quick count of the, uh, of the, the spaces going from High Street towards the back um, and compared it to the spaces that are currently from this satellite graph. And it seems like that, um, that won't give, give you that much landscaping. So to see a more detailed uh, concept where you, you state exactly what your intention is for the landscaping and also to Steve's point, how do you balance that uh, against the existing 541? Um, what kind of improvements could you consider for that uh, to balance it? So general sense, is it worth moving forward? 
again, uh, you should. It seems like if we get the neighborhood on board, you, you guys. Yeah, yeah the neighborhood that seems board, to be. Yeah, yeah, that would be helpful. If you get the, I don't know if you can get the whole neighborhood on board. Uh, Certainly the abutters. Uh, you, you, yeah, you need to get. Uh, well, you gotta start with the guy across the street. Uh, <laughs> I remember he was pretty vocal, and uh, and again, I think you can, you, you're gonna have to do. It sounds like to get it through, you might actually yeah have to do a, a formal EIDR with the planning board. So there is a definite engineered plan out there that, and, and here it is, and this is what's going to happen. So people know, uh, and we can you know condition it so that uh, that's the plan that has to take effect, and then people know exactly what they're going to get. I think that's what we talked about at the staff meeting. Yeah. Again, you got the you, you had the uh, the recommendation of the planning board before, right? I, I would different owner now. John, they just purchased it uh, several months ago. Just out of curiosity, I don't have to answer this if you don't want to. But why? Why now? I mean, are you just is it is there a lease? Is there a lease extension online of some sort, or just is there some other driver I'm out there? Or, but right. Certainly, as you know, as an architect, mm -hmm. more properly you can park it the more satisfaction with the tenants. Sure. And the stability of the tenants. Yeah. So yep. For all those reasons, no intention other than providing adequate parking. Yeah. No, I I totally buy that. I'm, I'm as I said, I'm just trying to. Yeah. Knowing what we've gone through in the past year, we just want to see. Yeah. All right. But it certainly makes people happier. Again, you look at the building now, and it's it's not very pretty, simply because there's absolutely no landscaping. It's just a bunch of parked cars all around the building. Uh, and actually, I, I'm sorry for interrupting. Yeah. You continue. Okay. No, I mean just. And the other thing too is when you're coming down High Street, what I think helps that building out is that landscaping in the lot before it that we're talking about putting the parking lot in. Like you come down, you see trees, and then you come to that parking lot where there isn't um, landscaping that. There's a small so. landscaping strip, but the parking that's just in right on that property line would actually go away. So I think you would eliminate a lot of visibility of cars coming down 109. You know, it would get pushed into the woods, yeah. if you will. So I, I think that whole strip of cars would disappear into that lot. So you're losing some and adding not necessarily 32, but whatever would fit there yeah. adequately. And how did you come up with the, the number of cars? It wasn't a specific number. Got it. it was Got it. Yeah, just, yeah. A, again, com completely conceptual. This yeah. Is, all has to be, obviously. I just didn't know if there was like a feasibility where you you knew how many cars were well, waiting for you. Yeah. You know, 10,000 foot building roughly. So Got it. I buy for one end with medical uses, probably reasonable. So somewhere around 50 is going to be the right number. Yeah industry yeah and in the the pediatric folks have in the past as we know supported the additional parking for their customers and it is a big service for the town of Westwood mm -hmm. as some of you probably know yep. I'm sure you guys have been there hmm. Okay. Uh, do you have the general sense of uh, Yeah, I mean, I guess. Do we all agree? Yeah, I think we're. I feel like we're somewhat all agree. I haven't really heard much out of Mike, but <laughs> you're good. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I think some sense of what the uh, neighbors slash abutters, you know, are. You know, if they feel supportive. I mean, if not a. You know, if not an EI, certainly not an EIDR plan. Like, but I mean, if we if we want to come back in with a more refined kind of concept plan that shows both lots and what it might really look like, um, I think that would help us all get a grip on what what we're looking at here. Um, so, is that enough to go on, or do we need to? All right. So for fall town meeting, their right. next the planning board's meeting next on um, August twenty second, mm -hmm. and that's when you would want to decide on any recommended. Zoning articles for a fall town meeting right. um, to be submitted to the selectmen. So the next town meeting would be not till the spring. So I don't know if you're able to do some outreach um, 
Yeah, Board some neighbors. We can definitely do it. I mean, some is a little tougher to do outreach, but I think we can mm -hmm. definitely get in touch with who we need to get in touch with. Okay. The the general sense that we're looking for, I think I understand where the members are coming from. If you can get overall site improvement, more landscaping, and the abutters are supportive, um, it seems like the membership is okay with the plan. Is that right? Yes. Generally speaking? Yeah, I'd also really want, the, the other thing I'd want to know before any of this is how how restrictive can it be as far as the zoning um, and then in future combining of the lots in the future and um, the assumptions of parking I think assuming that you can do underground parking uh, because that's being done now uh, so what I'd have to know that before I supported that All right so the, the zoning could not be restricted but if you were to support it you could consider the EIDR application with clear conditions. Um, so it's, it sounds like there's a couple members that need to be convinced of the overall benefit for extending the commercial district on High Street. I think talking to the people on Birch Tree would, uh, would be very helpful to that, knowing how um, they were very concerned about issues in, the, in, in that area before so I think uh, not just the immediate abutters but kind of that neighborhood would uh, be good to uh, yeah, share agree. these uh, share these ideas with I think having it more than just a parking lot talking about it but I, I, I get it like they may they don't want to park where you know transient people, people are gonna hang out or something <laughs> <laughs> but um, <laughs> something that's a true buffer that's uh, appeals to the people in the neighborhood would uh, be really this would look like a positive. We're extending the zoning to allow for something that improves the business and the neighborhood. That's that's the key. I mean, as you folks know, you can't win a town meeting unless it appeals to the the neighborhood and the overall best interests of the town. And that's mm -hmm. essentially what we're trying to get a general <coughs> sense of folks about. I mean, we don't want to have you guys on board, have us on board, and then lose a town meeting on it. Which can happen. Yeah. yeah, we don't want to be on board <laughs> and have it blow up at town meeting no. either. Well, there's right. lots of opportunity for it to blow up before then. <laughs> um, no, I mean, if, if, if you haven't tracked the, if you didn't track the the the, the ramp up to last town meeting with the various petition articles, all the th that were all related to the development isn't in the center. I would yeah, maybe I encourage you to. That watch some of the tape I guess <laughs> um, you might you might draw out some of the same folks I would say with this because it's the it's still a hot item I think that's why our goal would be to have it a planning board sponsored article and not a petition article like we had at town meeting right. that's why we want to work with you and that's why we came here to get and a would sense. we have neighbors here at that 22nd meeting because I'd want to um. I'd actually want to hear from them before I supported it um, I wouldn't want to just have it as I hear say, oh, yeah, we. No, they would get notice. They would get notice of the hearing. Yeah, and I'd also want. Well, like if there said, was a hearing, oh, but. Twenty seconds. Yeah. Yeah. Hearing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, we'd have to. We do. We'd have to. Run. If you move forward with supporting an article, there would be a public hearing. Um, but I think, I think what I heard uh, from a lot of people was the idea that they should have been informed of zoning changes. And so it, not just the abutters, but uh, everyone across, well, the guy across the street is, the, is an abutter, I guess. But I think we heard loud and clear that people felt that they should have been notified about any zoning changes. So it, will, it could appear to be a deal that was worked out between you know, the planning board and, and all. So it's, I think the more the community that knows about it and uh, is engaged early the better so your August meeting would not be a notified meeting to the neighborhood right we wouldn't typically <laughs> if we don't have an application in front of us um, you'd have to apply for the EID uh, and even then it wouldn't make it on right um, the filing deadline for our site plan review application is next week but I don't think you're ready for that I mean no. normally we wouldn't notify of discussion items or, or 
you know, kind Aside of Aside from just the agenda being posted right. on the website, right? I mean. Right, in the listserv. Um, Yeah, I don't. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't, procedurally, I don't know what's appropriate. Is it, is it appropriate for you to reach out to these abutters and say, right. "Hey, the like we're doing is this"? Not to scare them off right. in the first place. You right. Know, is people start drawing hard lines real quick, and you know you want to get your message across before any of that takes place. That's the challenge. It's getting the word out and getting everybody on the same page. I think you should get the immediate abutters and find out how the, they'd be in favor of it you know, or not and uh, see if you can get them to attend our next meeting when we discuss it. Good plan. That makes sense, yeah. So what houses are we talking about? How far does it extend? Well, just the most immediate abutters is all we, we need. It's the, uh, the two or three across the street. And uh, the next two down and the three behind, I think. Uh, well, they won't affect it either. I mean, the, the, right now you have cars parked right at the boundary line, uh, the back of a house on, on Birch Street Drive. Uh, that person knew that that line of cars would be moved somewhere else. Uh, then they, they certainly might be in favor of right. it. And then knowing that that in, would in, increase the amount of plantings that are going on there, more trees and whatnot. I, I still think that that's a small sample to uh, recommend something on August 22nd for town meeting, trying to figure out if if Birch Tree Drive. If those residents are interested in this, I think I think I think you have to extend the sample out. Myself. Well, I mean, initially, just initially. Yeah, but it, yeah, but on the twenty second, you need to make. It sounds like that's when you need to make the just um, recommendations to the a sorry, a recommendation to or the list of articles. So then it will <coughs> once the selectmen close the warrant, um, usually in early September. Then it will be forwarded um, to planning board for um, public hearing, notification, um, and, and finance so and warrant commission. So, right. So, so you could just right. discuss it on the 22nd if if you're ready. If you've done some outreach, sounds like at least initial concept discussion of how they would feel about this proposal. If you're able to get them to attend the August 22nd meeting. I mean, I think those, the, the key about is we should either, they should either come to that 22nd meeting or, or you can get a statement from them how they feel about it. So on the 22nd, you're just presenting articles to the Board of Selectmen. Right. Well, no, nope, the planning, no, the planning board just discussed it. It'll be a repeat of, of this. We don't have any other, we don't, we don't have any others, so right. at this I, point in time. Do we have any others? I don't have any that I would like to recommend at this time for fall town meeting. Um, Was there anything at the last? We had town a meeting? we had a lot of articles. We, um, I always have a running list of possible zoning amendments, but since we just did so many, um, I prefer to not have any more zoning proposed um, unless it's an emergency. <laughs> That's an. <laughs> <laughs> but is it I'm just wondering if this is a tall glass to fill by August 22nd for well, me to for me to not we're gonna go forward we don't even know yet it's right. just it's no, probably it's, not, it's, it's getting not for to us. crunch time it, it's uh, they have to uh, show support or opposition from from the neighbors so then we can decide on the 22nd if you even want to consider it right. and if you're not ready if if you're not ready then it could be considered possibly later by the planning board at a future <coughs> town meeting but you, you also like. could put it on a list and have the selectmen hold an article and then just pull the yeah article. it can be withdrawn you've done that before you we've submitted articles and then it gets withdrawn after so then it would go through the finance commission mm -hmm. hearings as well right so it would get vetted pretty thoroughly. 
But for me to support something like this, I'd have to hear from the neighbors. I'd want to, it'd have to be a little bit deeper dive than. Right, your, your support would just be to place the article reserving your rights to be against the article. You're just holding the spot yeah. for a town yeah. meeting. Right. We won't <clears throat> vote on whether we're going to support it or not at that point. Yeah, but I wouldn't, right. I wouldn't add it to the list myself. I would not be in favor of that unless I had a more detailed plan and I heard from the neighbors. Right. Okay. That's me. Okay. No, that makes sense. <clears throat> I think I get a pretty good general sense. Okay. Thank you. Sure. John, anything on your end? Anything else, guys? No, thank you. Thank you, John. No, thanks. Thank you. Thank Thanks you for, for your volunteer efforts. Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, okay. Okay. Um, other business? Signing of decisions? Do we have anything yes. to sign? Yes, we have uh, the lap of circle. And... This is the um, Earth Movement um, approval. And then now we had prepared a cover page of a draft denial for the 480 Summer Street. Oh, we don't have to do anything on that. Do you have to sign? Well, we, can, we continued, right? So yeah, we continued. It continued the hearing, but I think <coughs> you. The hearing, but we, we have to write up the decision. We have an outstanding vote. Uh, well. I think you still have to write up a, the um, motion. Um, yeah, I mean, if this is going going to be denied, I would hope we have better wording for the, the reason, and, it, and it's not three reasons, uh, because there really was only one reason, uh, or as someone said. I don't think it's, I think it's more than just one, Steve. Yeah, you know, we're talking about the, the character of that neighborhood, the, there was, it was more than just that easement. Yeah, but see, I, di I disagreed that the character of the neighborhood is mostly is with the affected by the driveway on Summer Street. That's what people are going to see. That's the character of the neighborhood. Right. Well, we don't have a draft of that motion right now for you to sign. Good enough. The way it was ended up. Yeah. Uh, well, and actually, not to work on yeah you know, on a better draft. Mm -hmm. Not to rehash. Uh, can we rehash that? Can we can we speak of that of that case? I guess we can call it. Uh, Talking about the draft. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah, the case that we can do, and stop me if I'm violating, if I'm going too far, but I mean, there, there was a notion, the, the issue of the town council review of this thing, mm -hmm. I mean, the, which they just kept driving at. And I mean, is that something right. that should be done between now and when we see them again? You, you got, I didn't a, certain, think it you was got a, a, just a very general opinion. Uh, you right. Didn't get a specific opinion. No, I did not request a written opinion. I didn't think it was necessary. Okay. With discussions on the zoning and right. subdivision. But I mean, I, I think, <laughs> I, I think we need an opinion from, from town council on our denial, uh, the reasons for denial, are they really uh, substantial okay. enough to, to uh, be reasonable and, and not be deemed uh, you know, unreasonable? Uh, uh, denial. So I think that would be the dis the question to ask. Uh, I mean, if you want, and then right. the, and the town well, I'll still have to write up your motion. To, if town council wants to uh, f further give the opinion in, in writing or whatever, or verbally to you about that question about the subdivision, which I'm pretty confident uh, is not an issue. But there is language in the bylaws that are um, interpretable for that. No, it, it's there's something the mentioned. Shared, shared driveway. If you read the shared driveway article, I, I, it's it's that this is not a means to 
circumvent having a subdivision, but uh, but the interpretation that they were getting wrong was was you know, you know whether this as a driveway the, the rules for subdivision apply and and they, they don't and I think further you can get a further opinion but that this is not a trying to get around the subdivision because this is passes the ANR test. I'll review further with town council for your continued hearing. Yeah, I just, I just felt like I, we were kind of on our heels on that one. I just felt like it was kind of like yeah. there was no, we had no response. So yeah, I mean, if we had be been able to say, uh, yes, we talked, we talked to town council and they said that if the frontage requirements are met, then it's an ANR. And so the subdivision law does not apply. That would be helpful to just, just say mm -hmm. here it is. That would have taken the wind out of one line of argument. So whatever you come up with for mm -hmm. a reason for denial, I think you need to carefully run it by town council okay. to see if, 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 if that's a reasonable that would be argument for, um, for denying it. Yeah. I don't know if that's, I mean, is that something that the planning board has done? Like, why is this different from any other thing? Like, why do we want to put ourselves in the position of having the town council weigh in on whether our decisions are appropriate or not? Or it's, well, adequately it's not whether it's, a, it's whether it's, it's that one question. Yeah, whether it could stand the uh, Well, if it stands, it'll be answered either way. Yeah. We don't I mean, think we're looking we, for We're not asking him to, 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 to judge whether we were Proof. Correct in denying it or not. We're asking him if our reasons, reasons for if our findings are, uh, yeah, you know, for findings on that are uh, a valid kind of uh, um, a reason for denial. And that wasn't the only one. <clears throat> that's not the only reason. We're talking about one point. The, right. That's not the reason, Steve. Uh, we're asking him oh, versus. Is this something we should go into right. executive session? Well, we could. Um, yeah. I'll get more information for you for the next meeting. I mean, I had drafted those. You know, it was late yesterday, so I did not have time to review them with the town council. I don't typically, but I could ask for him to review. Yeah, I, th I, I don't know. I think again, I thought we were put on. We were put. It, we were put it back by their commentary about the subdivision issue, and then. And that's, I think, you know, a little more uh, some opinion from town council about what the reasons for denial may be would be help would, be, would help everyone on the board okay. get past this. It would. Project. But we have a professional town plan. We do. I'm. Uh, yeah. I'm. You know. All right. And a land new specialist. I think we're covered. <clears throat> anyway, all right, so we talked about the, do we have any, any other decisions? Did everyone sign the, what just went by? Okay. Okay. All right. No others? So you don't have anything else to sign? Nope, that's it. Sorry, okay. what, that was Adela Park and. And that's it. We don't have a motion that, ref we don't have a draft of what reflects your motion on the Summer Street one. Um, and then we also want to talk about um, the Petruziello Town um, project. I think Brian wasn't here at the last meeting, but the Board of Selectmen at their last meeting did agree to enter into um, or work with the developer on um, uh, a disposition a agreement, memorandum of understanding oh, for right now. I think they're working on that for their meeting probably next week. And then they're continuing their work on a disposition agreement that will probably take a little bit longer over the summer. Um, so in the past, um, for complex projects or um, larger scale projects, you've had um, appointed two planning board members to serve as a subcommittee that would meet with town staff and possibly a cons the, your peer review consultant and applicant um, prior to the official submission to try to give advice and guidance um, before submitting the application. Just, um, it would be informal it's advisory, but to help them um, design their plans in a way that um, has um, less likely to 
um, be revised over and over again to help the public process move more smoothly once an application is submitted. Um, you've done that a couple of times, I think probably most recently with University Station, Brigham and Women's. Um, we've had the rules and regs have the chairman appoint two members to serve on this um, subcommittee. Um, generally though, applicants usually come to town staff um, prior to your submit. Um, well, they'll contact us first for um, advice prior to the submission, or they'll just submit it. So those are really the alternatives for getting into the planning board. What's the what's your sense of how how, how eminent is their application? Do we think? I mean, they're still f dancing, so to speak, with the selectmen about what right. the right. They're still working with the selectmen. So, be. I mean, I think the soonest an official application could even be submitted to you would be. September, um, although that could leave some time in July and August. Um, I think a meeting with them any time now would be to work out some of the problems that we know would be possible. And I was wondering if if there aren't different areas that we need the, the same two people or, or uh, could be <coughs> different Sorry. people for different issues if we can, because I think a lot of people seem to be interested in Mm -hmm. well, this committee. I think that the, uh, the university station thing worked well because there was kind of a discussion here and there were concerns about the traffic configuration and then the subcommittee could work out the details and it might be better to take things as they come along. I would agree with that. You know, like we could have when an issue comes up, you can sort of parking lot it or something or say we'll give we'll appoint a subcommittee to deal with that particular issue yeah. I think it could be risky to have a subcommittee because it, then they go meet with the developer and work out everything exactly. and that's yeah. not I, I don't know that's not open because yeah. yeah. even for for one or two of us now to get involved we haven't seen a proposal yet so I don't know what that proposal even looks like because as I understand it from the last selectman meeting, um, they weren't totally concordant about what that proposal was going to look like. Um, that was the last I heard of anything. Yeah, and I mean, and in reality, and I can't remember what our what the what the um, isn't this in our task force's conditions were of of sort of the recommendation. But I mean, there's I would say there's probably still a fair amount of latitude for them to propose completely alternate ideas. I mean for good reasons obviously yes. so uh, yes. to your point like we may not know what they come back with the engineering may reveal something that says you know we can't do the driveway that way or cvs won't go there or whatever so they've you know they've drawn a hand sketch for all we for all intents and purposes at this point so and then what is what is this disposition agreement what are what does that bind the agreement to like what is that what is what are the selectmen what is the town agreeing to at this point well, we don't know yet. That's something they're working out. Like as um, of s when we get it in September, what what are the the parameters that they can make agreements? Um, I mean, basically, they're en entering into agreement to work together and give him permission to submit an application that involves town-owned land. Um, so I don't know all the details of there's what will be in there, but. So the memorandum of understanding between the selectman and the developer. That allows for a planning board application to be developed. Then there's a disposition agreement. That's actually the sale, lease, transfer, whatever whatever the final decision by the board is in how to treat the land. Assuming, assume it's a sale. Um, the town sells certain parcels of land to the developer. The developer sells certain parcels to the um, town and agrees to do some other work, building or whatever it is. That's the actual, it's a, it's a P&S agreement, yeah. essentially. Yeah. And that comes later. That comes before town meeting, subject to a town meeting bill. But the first step is the memorandum of understanding, and the purpose of that is to allow the planning board to either sign the application with the developer or grant the, grant the developer the right to submit an application yeah. on their behalf. Okay. So that's being okay. discussed right now. And may be considered by the plan by the selectmen as soon as Monday night if it's ready. Got it. So given the plan that I saw, I mean I'm already to get started on on working out 
uh, details on, on the, you know, the, the parking lots and the traffic arrangements. And you know, unless there's it's going to be significant changes there uh, that we need to wait for. But assuming, assuming that they're, they're using that as a starting point, and they, and maybe they've come up with something different, or have changes already or not. But I think we should, uh, as soon as they come up with them, or as soon as they say, uh, this is what we have so far, we should, we should have uh, two people here. Uh, working on it, just to I don't think so. Progress. I think we should all be working on it. And like I, I think as far Brigham and Women, the way we worked on it is we we all received the proposal, we reviewed the proposal, we came with our commentary, and then when certain items we knew, we sort of had a, a general idea of where we wanted to go. Like, yeah, like to the, Dave's the, point, the parking, that got parceled out. But I don't agree with having a subset of the planning board looking at information as it comes out. Yeah, but that's what we wanted to avoid having a full public hearing because if, if, if it came to the planning board first, then, then everyone would show up and we'd get a million opinions right away before we had a chance to come up with a reasonable solution. And I thought we were going to work on some kind of reasonable solution first. So Brigham and Women's worked because there was a subcommittee. So the subcommittee met for better part of a year working with a peer review consultant to get to the point where a design could be submitted to the planning board. And then the planning board took that more fully baked concept plan and worked on it until you came to resolution. But there was a subcommittee in that case, just as there was for you. Staff stuff. Um, subcommittee. Right. No, um, just staff. Uh, Chris Papp and, and Trevor. Right, well, but not until... It was only involved in two meetings. Right. Right, at the, at the end of... Direction. Right. So it began with staff and, and uh, peer review consultants. Right. Often is the case. And when it got to the point where there was something that needed buy-in, um, then the subcommittee members were asked to meet with them. And then when the subcommittee members developed into a point where they thought it was ready to go to the planning board, then an application was submitted, then it came to the planning board. So I think the idea is that you can't work on a plan outside of a public hearing if there's more than two of you, but you can help to steer a plan in the right direction so that you're not starting with an application that's doomed to fail. You're starting with an application that's moving in the right direction because you've had members weigh in on it. But Nora, what, so what do you think? What should it be? The same two members? It can, it can be, be or could change. It could be different members looking at different aspects of that yeah. development oh, plan. So there could be a subcommittee looking at transportation issues, a subcommittee of different members looking at design issues. You know, all of you could have your input, but only two at a time, and that helps get you a plan that is moving in a direction that you want it to go as opposed to a plan that the developer just submits and then you um, take from there. It's better, better to work a plan so that all of the issues are known and discussed and addressed in the concept level stages. But isn't that what the task force was sort of gearing it towards? I mean... Yeah, they've already done a lot of that. Already. Yeah, like there, was not a, there wasn't a task force that I know of for, um, for Brigham and Women. So the, so the task force looked at the big picture issues, but they didn't look at engineering. So we're talking about developing engineered plans, and you usually develop engineered plans with engineering consultants. So you usually develop engineer plans with the help of engineer consultants, right. and it because you five members are going to be voting on those, it's helpful to have a subcommittee that also participates in those initial discussions. It's not essential. Staff and, and peer review can do it without any planning board members participating, but it's, it's helpful to have planning board members participate, especially those of you that have strong feelings. So I would encourage you to have one or, or two subcommittees to work on those plans over the course of the summer. I, I guess I'm, I'm struggling with the, uh, the chicken and the egg issue here, like what comes first, right? Like we don't have anything we have to work with right now, unless we're saying we're going to invite right. them to bring what they've got while this right. well, while they this usually will still happening. contact us to meet usually right. s soon, um, as soon as possible to get initial input for them to prepare plans. So again, plans. memorandum of understanding comes first. They're sure. not going to spend a penny on plans unless the right. selectmen are on board. 
Right. So they need to work out that point. Then the next step would be staff and a peer review consultant getting together with the developer and hashing out the starting parameters. Sure. Then after we have something for you to react to, then we would call a subcommittee meeting. Sure. So we would be respectful of your time. We wouldn't oh, yeah, no, bring you sense. in when you know, there's nothing for you to review. Right, because I mean, I guess to I mean, I'm just trying to like balance. Because I think it's a good point to like to target target the issues rather than have kind of a wide open forum for subcommittee for the subcommittees. Like, but we don't even we don't even know what the issues are, frankly, right now. Right, we don't, we don't know. Right. Well, so if we knew if we knew issues like parking was going to be a big issue or um, residential, I guess just residential, like the amount, the, how that the components of that. I mean, then you could carve out some. Uh, topics like that. I mean, yeah. How would that work? Like you say, you're the a couple of people are the residential subcommittee, and a couple of people are the parking, and then just as long as they all don't meet at the same time. Yeah, I mean, I, I would think it would have to be a little more broad than that. It would probably have to be just building and site or something of that effect, or building and you know civil kind of thing. Because I mean, right, right. It wouldn't be issue based. Right. It would be plan based. Yeah. So maybe someone looks at architecture and someone looks at site planning. Exactly. Exactly. So I mean, my exposure to thus far on the plan board is that, is that the chair always seems to be one of the people on these subcommittees. Is that necessarily the case or not really? Or what's the other precedent? I've never really seen anything else but that. <laughs> it, uh, well, thinking back, it usually is that that's the way it is. I'm trying to remember with University Station, Steve, do you remember? You were not the chair and you were involved in subcommittee meetings yeah, with I that. Yeah, the chair and me. And I can't, I'm trying to remember who was the, the chair changed throughout uh, the course of those designs. Rob was Westwood Station. Westwood Station. Oh, oh, oh. In University Station, Jack was the chair for no, part no, of it. No, Steve no. was the chair for part of Rob, it. Rob was. Oh, 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 oh. Rob was Westwood Station. I think. I think and Steve Rafsky was the chair for the part where we had a subcommittee. Steve, Steve Rafsky and I were. So I think it usually is the chair. Doesn't have to be. There's no right. hard and fast rule. Steve, okay. and Steve was not necessarily the chair when he was doing some of those meetings. So in that case, it wasn't the chair. I think. Right. All right, so I, I, I'm sensing the interest levels here, but I, I know, Mike, I know you're all already involved in some other thing. Are Very you Very busy with the uh, municipal building, building task force. Right, which is unfortunately not unrelated. <laughs> Lucky for you. <laughs> um, and you have a big election coming up for tricks. Second. And I have an election coming up. Well, right, I need yes. to prepare for and campaign for. <laughs> I think you're running on a post. Right. So so given that, I mean, there's sort of there's four left, so and there's sort of a two and two. But given that we may not need to select the idea, the what those committees are tonight, might we state that myself and maybe I'm Brian, interested, yeah, yeah, Brian are part of one subcommittee, and Steve and uh, Brian. Sorry. Yeah. So I'm, I'm concerned about <laughs> <some of these laughs> what's your name, <laughs> Dave. Dave. I don't know why I wanted to call you Brian too. Um, or Dave are part of another subcommittee, whatever they are. So some of the issues I see already for the traffic would, would be how to arrange uh, a driver window at the... Uh, it may not even be there. Yes. Right. Uh, it may not even be there. But I, I hear you saying that could be a... Well, as of now, a potential. I mean, but CVS is not going to be in the... The selectmen may choose to not uh, want that. Well, assuming, I'm just saying, yeah, uh, assuming nothing yeah, has changed. Assume, right now, it's a, you know, how to get a, a window for CVS, uh, how to arrange the parking lot so it doesn't become a drive through to to avoid going through the traffic signals. Uh, and then, because the general intersection itself, uh, the improvements that we've been looking for for a while. But I, I still have an issue with this type of a concept. I get the idea of it, but considering this is going to go to town meeting, it's uh, a lot of residents are, are very interested in this. Is this a way of, this is a way of, Avoiding a formal plan so that you don't have a meeting where you... Not at all. This is a way of developing plans that residents can respond to. So what we have had are, I, I have lost count of how many public meetings we have had discussing concept plans where there are so many questions that can't be answered by the low level of detail of those plans. So this is a way of developing more detailed plans that can address the concerns and allow answers to questions residents have. Yeah. So the plans will be developed with or without a subcommittee. It's a question of whether you want involvement 
during the development of the plans or you just want to react to develop plans? So when, do, when would the public see plans? Because they want to see plans. Upon like application, as soon as the application so is submitted. So when is that? So we have these subcommittees and then an application? Yeah, so the application can't be submitted until the plans are completed. We need fully engineered plans that meet the, the special permit requirements. So they have to submit an application with developed plans. Those plans can change throughout the process, but they can't start with a concept plan. So what we do is work with them beforehand to develop those plans. And you can work with us along with them, or it can just be staff and peer review. Yeah, we can do it either way. My concern is that we have 40% of the planning board working on certain things. So then the plan comes, because you have two out of five, and then the plan essentially gets released as the planning board has worked with them and this is the plan when the other 60% haven't really been involved in some of the items. And that becomes very difficult, I would find. So for instance, if I'm not working on parking and then the parking plan comes out that's been essentially over reviewed by two planning board members um, and I don't like what I see, I have concerns about it, um, that I think puts us in a precarious position, especially this project. This is very different than, uh, than anything that. else. And it, it involves the selling of town land. So this is actually gonna have to go to vote um, and get a two thirds yes. Well, we don't know what it's gonna be as far as the sale trade or what have you. Um, but I think this is, I, I, I understand the idea of breaking out in two and two or what have you, but I think it puts us at a challenging spot too because the residents are interested in the, what are the plans. Mm -hmm. And this actually is a way of keeping that from them for a certain amount of time. So the, the, the plans this. will not be public plans until an application is submitted. Whether you or any of you participate in the development of the plans, they're not public plans until they're submitted. So that development will happen. It, the the creation of plans yeah. has to happen before an application <clears throat> can be submitted. We will work with the developer in creating those plans so that we end up with plans that you can review. If you don't want to participate until it's an official application, that's fine. But we've found in other projects, University Station and Brigham and Women's and several others, um, Stagecoach Plaza, that's another one that I think, Trevor, I think you were involved in that yeah, when you first right. came, came <laughs> along. Right, yeah. 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 And, and it just makes for a better project if you have input from the beginning. Yeah. But if you're not comfortable with that, by all means, don't get involved until the application is well, submitted. But understand that the plans have to be developed before the application can go forward. I think it's, it's the mechanics, it's the complication of um, the, the sort of the constraint of like, oh, well, only two people at a time. Um, and yeah, we can't, we're already, we're constrained from individually um, talking to the developer so this is sort of an exception allow two of us to meet with staff and then you think well what about are there is there a way to engage people from the community also are there people is there some some kind of a hybrid process uh, that could be because we've already had that right so right that that's what the concept plan <laughs> review has been up until this point yeah. what i think is important to note is when this these subcommittee meetings you have the same restrictions that are on you outside of that. You are not allowed to engage in um, deliberation on the plans mm -hmm. between the two members that are on the subcommittee. It's all about advice, suggestion, brainstorming. It's not implying that you support it or don't support it. It's not, um, I don't know, uh, predicting what your vote may be when it comes before you. Right. It's simply working to influence the development of the plans to get the best plan possible no promise to approve it that's not what this is about right. this is just trying to get the best plans we can and we can do it just as staff and consultants so if you're not comfortable with it by all means don't have a subcommittee it just it's proven effective in several larger projects i mean there are three ways this can be done i mean the developer could just do this himself and say here's the plans here's the application or the developer could work with the staff and come up with uh, uh, something better or, or the 
developer can work with the staff and two members of the planning board to come up with something that's hopefully uh, much better, uh, much closer to, to uh, a good looking plan. And, uh, and then when, you know, then when it's set as an application, then everyone is involved. Right. And once an application is submitted, that's when it's public, that's when you schedule a public hearing, that's when those plans get posted on the website and available. But I mean, the original okay. Brigham and Women's, I don't know what it looked like before it got to us. But when it got to us, the traffic was not very good. It was not well laid out at all. And uh, that's why we ended up with that subcommittee to, to work that out because it was just too much to work out of the planning board meeting. So let's think hypothetically here, mm -hmm. this idea is. <clears throat> so what would those two um, groups look like? What, what would they look at? You said one would look at the architecture, Trevor? Yeah, I was kind of hypothesizing and writing notes at the same time. So I was saying maybe there's a traffic and site kind of group and there's probably a what I call building site planning and design group. I mean, because yeah. I think that's the only logical way to break it apart, I, frankly. I don't, I don't see a way to... So what are the details within those when you talk about site? So we're talking about... Um, so I would think it's, uh, you know, sort of, I, guess I would say traffic flow, pedestrian issues, how the how intersection is re-manipulated and handled, um, uh, parking, certainly. Um, and that's all that really comes to mind. And then building site plan would probably be but the, the general building massing and how the actual buildings fit on the site and how big they are, like in a plan view and probably a massing view, and then ultimately design, like what do they actually look like at the end of the day on the outside. Um, unfortunately, none of these things are live in a vacuum from each other. So exactly, there is like a, the cross-pollination would be up to the developer, I think, to sort out or once he has the the kind of meld, I suppose, and I don't know what your thought on that is. So what we would be doing is we will have several meetings throughout the process of developing these plans, and at different meetings we'll focus on different topics, but yep. the plans evolve, and so the the, uh, the massing of the buildings is seen in the plans that are looking at the configuration of the parking spaces, right. and the layout of the intersection goes towards where you can place buildings on the lot. So there's, so both subcommittees will be seeing the same plans. It's just a question of, at some meetings, we'll be focusing on certain aspects, which will then inform the next meeting where we focus on other aspects. So um, it, it's, it's going to be a seamless design, but you cannot all participate in all of it outside of a public meeting. It just can't be done. So if we're not going to deliberate, why is there still a public meeting problem? If we're um, not, if because you're we're still bound by those uh, things. Because the concern is that, the that it, well, that, that your comments could be taken by other members as deliberation, even if they're not intended that way. So we avoid any possibility of that by never allowing more than two of you in a room where there's anything involved in an application. So the, pr I mean, the process here is that I appoint, right? I mean, I, as a chair, right. correct, or I make the recommendation, I guess, to the selectman or whatever it is. Um, uh, no, or you no. make the appointment. No, I just it's do your it, appointment. Right? Okay, wasn't sure if it was one of those types of things. But I'm hearing some discomfort from at least two members of my board. One is abstaining because he's busy. <laughs> <laughs> I am not abstaining. I am okay. I'm so in the mix. And I'm not, you know, I'm not uncomfortable with the, and I'm just, how do, how do we make it, how do we make this work? Like, exactly. I think absolutely, the whole point of this is we want a seat at the table. You know, we right. want to talk to the developer and we want to talk about these, um, exactly. this stuff as much as possible and not just be sitting up here for five hours listening to a long list of people talk. Right. We want to get in and do something. But uh, how do we do that with only two when there's, when everybody wants to be involved? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, this is Rotate. a this is a <laughs> what's that? Rotate have two different people every time. This is probably the the biggest hot topic in the town. If you no, look at if you look at sheer number, right? This is this is the one, and it's complicated because it has it has parking issues, it has traffic issues, it has size and scope issues, it has town character issues, uh, it has the you know the apartment number issue, all the things that. I would think the selectmen are dealing with today if they haven't made up their minds yet. I know they had three or four meetings about a general idea about what they want this to be without looking at um, the width of a, uh, of a 
parked car. Right. So I just don't know how we do this, having two people go in, not deliberating. I think in a way, I don't know if it puts us in a challenging position also, because uh, when you come out of that, there is a plan, and that's a, that's a submitted plan that the rest of the board sees for the first time. And in a way, it, it sort of has our, not a stamp of approval, but a stamp of we were involved with the... Well, with two the, members were involved. Two, right. exactly. And it could still be modified even at that point. Right. Yeah. But at that point, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears have gone into it, I'm sure. And those members who are working on it, uh, there's an emotional component to it. You can be like, oh, my God, like now. I agree with you, but that's the risk you take. Well, how, is, many, how many meetings would be, what do you really think realistically? This is, it's not going to be like we're going to spend 80 hours. So. Right, no. Usually, I mean, time, so when like I, five yeah, I would think somewhere between. Three, hours, three, three and to five. five. So it's probably a total of 10 hours, give or take. Yeah. Well, again, so, so back to sort of time frame. I mean, by the time we get to our next meeting, do we think we would, there would be appetite to actually have one of these sessions happening or not? We're in the middle of the summer and yeah. they haven't started a drawing yet. Like, it's not that there's some reservation, which I would like mm -hmm. to let people debate before we do this, I guess, internal, like, in your own way. Um, they might. Are the, the selectmen are meeting this Monday night. I don't they know. are. So I don't know if they'll have their memorandum of agreement right. ready or not. If they do, they may sign it, and design will begin immediately. Right. You can always appoint a couple of people in an alternate and uh, take it as if there's five meetings and not, it's possible that you won't people won't be able to make every single mm -hmm. meeting so if you have something like right. that. Right. And then we could check in on at the next meeting in August with an yeah. update. Right. So I mean Brian, would you be comfortable if we made the appoint made the <coughs> assign the sigma meetings tonight and or not? Yeah, I'm I still it's issue. I mean, it's 10.30, I'm, my brain's a little yeah, I'm tired sure to know. wrap my head around it because I, I do have concerns about the, the impact of, and I get it, you go into a, you want these meetings to be productive, and so you're making the most out of it. Mm -hmm. If you wait until there's a vetted plan, not a vetted plan, a plan from the developer submitted to the town for which we all see it at the same time, uh, and we have an open meeting, so there's a there's a forum during the meeting where we talk about it, and then you have public hearing, uh, which have which have brought in lots of people. Right. Uh, so then that that has an impact on uh, on moving the project. So what is what is the best way of doing it? I think this is a special one. I don't I don't know how we. I also think about it this way too. There was a task force for which they looked at the model, how they wanted to present this. That was submitted to the selectmen as a recommendation from the task force. The, the selectmen then reviewed it over a course of four meetings and decided on what they felt they were willing to recommend to us. Is this is, this is the starting point that we, we've agreed to. And now planning board, you are going to now uh, review this under the guidelines of bylaws and and such. So we take it from there. If we start breaking off, so now you have again forty percent of the board, two out of five. Um, I mean, we can be totally juxtaposed about certain certain issues. So then that plan comes back, and it's. It doesn't look like the way you want it to, but that person has spent five, five meetings, ten hours, or what have you. Um, what does that do to the dialogue? It get, it does get you a little bit further along. Um, I think there are things that would that can help. Like if you're the person who is, it's not like you you're going to uh, have a completely different outcome and come back here and say, hey, we decided it would be great to have 300 apartments. <laughs> you know, like that's not going to happen. Right, right, right. But um, it'll be um, the person who was there uh, participated in a d deeper discussion. And so when the issues come up here, 
you can enlighten the rest of the, the group as to that. It's like we um, we discussed this, we talked about that, or you know, little things like. Um, I don't think you can though. I don't think you can because there's the, there's always the the potential to affect the. Um, um, I, mean, I assume there'd be like a report, like there'd be some notes or something from these things that could be shared with everybody to read. So there'd be like some sort of a report of the meeting. Um. Not really. Oh, yeah. all, all it is is that the applicant is developing an application. You either take the opportunity to comment on that application while it's in the development stage or you don't. That's all. It's, yeah. it, they're informal meetings. They're really about s staff, engineers talking to engineers and staff weighing in with concerns that that have been raised before or that we see a potential for being raised. And if you want to act on the same level as the staff, you can do that. And if you don't feel comfortable, then don't submit a subcommittee. And staff will work with the applicant and get the application to a point where you can review it formally. All right, well, it's, <coughs> again, to Brian's point, it's 1040 now. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't feel an overwhelming um, support of the subcommittee concept at this moment in time, and I'm going to say we defer this conversation to the August 22nd, and if something happens in the meantime, which I would be stunned if there was vast movement forward in the next month, um, you know, perhaps there's meetings with, with staff, and the next meeting we appoint some subcommittees and we move on if we think we can get our heads around that concept at that point. Yeah. Okay. Well, we could, at a minimum, if there's a meeting or something informal, could attend as the chair. I mean, we would want to be, we want to have that seat at the table. Right. So does that, does that sort of make sense? If there's a, okay. if there's a staff meeting, if there's a staff meeting, could I, could I attend without any action, <laughs> I guess, to the today or, or not? Yeah. I mean, if so, yes, you could appoint yourself yeah, you to attend. Have, <laughs> if you have someone else to attend. Yeah, I mean, you could appoint yourself and, and Brian and um, to, in case something comes up and then we can revisit in this at, uh, the, um, yeah. at the August meeting. Okay. Does that sound reasonable for now? It okay. Does. All right. So for the moment, I would like to appoint myself and Brian to, to be the current subcommittee for the Azunian Center project, projects. Um, and we'll take up this topic again at the following meeting, at our next meeting, August 22nd. Okay. Okay. Topics not reasonably anticipated to be discussed. Pass. Minutes to approve. <laughs> Three sets. <laughs> Three sets of minutes. Um, I have glanced at all of these. Does anyone have any other comments on 5, 9, 23, or 6, 27? Hearing none, do I have a motion to approve these minutes? I move that we approve these minutes. All right. Uh, do I hear a second? Second. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Um, I have a note here on up, up, upcoming planning board meetings that we're going to cancel next week's meeting. Yes. Hooray. Um, next meeting will be on 822. Gables ground, I mean, uh, Brigham's um, groundbreaking on Monday morning, 8.30. 17th. I think you received invitations, hopefully, or they're on their way. It sounds familiar. Okay, all right, it is <laughs> Monday the 17th, 8.30. push the, um, the Outlook emails to our phones, or is that, a, is that not be done. Um, Dave knows how. Well, you can put the Outlook app on. Oh, there we go. All right. Um, we have a motion to, to adjourn the meeting. I second that. All I those in favor? I motion. Okay. Aye. <laughs> all right. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. I have four eyes. All right. So, so Dave. <laughs>